Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Guess what? It's 2 o'clock Eastern. You know what that means? I bet you do. I bet I do. I know I do because I'm constantly the one who, uh, who knows? I don't know what that means. Um, today is a cab and doodle day. Let me, uh, get that all set up over to the side so I can track what people are saying. Uh, I'm going to put in the comments the ask us anything. I'm going to, um, give a little quick intro for our guest and then I will let our guest in in just a second. Boom, 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 boom. Three exclamation points because that's more fun. Um, so today, um... We're going to have uh, Carter Higgins join us, who you probably know from um, Circle Under Barry, and uh, th there was one book we wanted to get from the library that didn't come in in time, which is annoying, but uh, Everything You Need for a Treehouse, Big and Small and In Between. Uh, some of these are written by Carter. Uh, the Circle Under Barry is illustrated as well uh, by Carter, and so we'll, we'll be talking to Carter here in just a little bit, but... Um, I wanted to give a quick update for anybody that's tuning in today. Um, next week we have off, or I have off rather. Um, it's uh, uh, on Tuesday. I got to go get my wisdom teeth out, and I can't guarantee that I'm going to be in good shape on Thursday. Uh, I might be fine. Let's cross our fingers. Everybody cross your fingers for me. Um, I may be absolutely a okay, but I'm not going to guarantee it, and so uh, we're taking the week off. Uh, and then the following week we have Lala Watkins on. Um, I realized I don't think I ever posted last week's up to YouTube. I need to make note of that before I forget. Um, Lauren, if you're listening, remind me. Uh, I need to post last week's to YouTube. I'm writing it on my, uh, desk here on the side. Um, so anyway, so we're going to have Carter in in just a second. Uh, we're going to be drawing, talking, etc. Again, for anybody that doesn't know, I post these to YouTube generally <laughs> a couple days after, not last week, apparently. Um, and, uh, it's a chance for us to chat, uh, chat and talk and make and listen and all sorts of fun. So let me let our guest in. Let me see. I got, oh, all right. Perfect. Listening. We will see. Sometimes this works. Sometimes. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I thought I was froze out. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, um, uh, you mean that like I wasn't letting you in or? No, no, I, d I couldn't get you to play. Uh, I just had to quit a lot of oh. times. <laughs> okay. okay, well, hopefully uh, just a uh, heads up. If for some reason it, it bops you out of this or me, we'll hop back in relatively quickly and and be good you never know what the internet's going to do on a regular basis around this household at least um, accurate yeah. <laughs> so thank you for joining me um I, i've been uh, excited to have you on for a while i know that there was a uh we had a rain check uh because of a conflict at one point i think and uh we've been dying to get you back on and we finally got the the day pinned down and it's been uh uh creeping up on us we've we've uh, been following your work for a long time and um, I know that there were a lot of, of folks who wrote me saying like, oh, when's Carter going to be back on after, uh, uh, because I, the monthly thing came out and it had your name and then it yeah. had dipped at some point or, um, but bailed. <laughs> we're, no, 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 no. It's, it's life. There's uh like I said, uh, during the intro, like I have stuff that happens next week that I just timing wise can't have someone on. So, um, but thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, no. These are fun. These are fun to watch. So you're a scissors fan, idea. right? What I am. The scissors are we using? Um, okay, these are I, Westcott. I don't actually West. know. I will confess to stealing these sort of accidentally from my um, my last librarian job, um, but they're better than any other scissors I've ever used. They're like they're just like old enough to be like I don't know like like loosed up, loosened up. Yeah, like it's not. Oiled up enough, so. It's, I would it's be not sad rusted if I lost these. It out or anything, you have to right. really force it. Yeah. Right, I have another pair at, a, at my parents' house and like I try to use them there and it's like uh -huh. crunchy, you know, it doesn't work. We have we have a 
pair that's in our like uh, junk drawer in our kitchen that were, was my favorite pair. And then someone must have used it at some point to clip something like plastic, like heavy plastic, mm. or like maybe it was like uh, fake flowers that had a metal wire in it or something mm. like that. And now it's got a little yeah. spot in it that it's just not a perfect clean cut. And so like, it's why I have this pair and this is my favorite pair. It's Those spring loaded. Those are gigantic. Uh, it's not that. It's, 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 I like it because it's palm. So you're not using your fingers. Uh, uh, so you okay. can do it without, without like Smart. a lot of rip. Yeah. Part. Um, and I don't even know where I got these. They're like, I think they're uh, quilting shears of some sort. Oh, cool. Um, and I think maybe that's why it's flat on the bottom. So you can like run along. Uh, oh, no uh, clip, though, but I dig them. Um, but <laughs> well, tell me about your glue. I feel like you are an interesting glue person. Uh. I don't know if that's gonna. I don't think that's gonna live up to to what you think because this is my glue. Oh yeah. Okay, same. <laughs> I buy I buy giant packs. This is a what a, a thirty pack. Yeah. And I just slowly this one is work brand it up. new. Oh, look how you get, good. You get the purple one. I get the clear one because I'm afraid the purple's gonna stain something. Uh, I know it dries clear, um, but like so far, so I just good. don't. I don't trust it. I. Um, I bought like really fancy glue once. I thought you were like a painter, like a glue painter. I, at one point, I, I do have some stuff for doing that, but like it just gets cumbersome and it's yeah. extra paint on the brush. Yeah. I tried that once because I thought that's like what you were supposed yeah. to do and um, I didn't like it. No, same with me. It's, it's, I already have paint out. I have brushes and like once you get glue in the brush, if you don't get that out and that dries, that's yeah, really yeah. problematic. And so like... The glue stick is my friend, and I've, I've, I mean, I've gone through hundreds of them. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but they are, they are lovely, and I, I think, I mean, it's the equivalent of like Crayola, like people discount some of the like basic craft yeah. stuff. Uh, and, like, yeah. Makes it if it works for you. Right. Um. So okay. why don't you, why don't you give a little quick rundown of uh of who you are for those that are listening that may not know you now? Of course they should. Uh, and and um, they might know you as an author, might know you as an illustrator or both. Um, but why don't you give a quick rundown of your your uh, background? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. That's good. That's it's a lot. I know. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, I'm Carter, and I'm an author and illustrator. Sometimes an author only, sometimes both at one time. Um, but I've been. Um, I don't know. It's oh, so hard. I should have practiced. <laughs> I was a school librarian for 10 years, which I think has informed a lot of um, what I do, both like content wise and then like thinking about the use of the final product this is, of a book. This is elementary school? Yeah. yeah. I was at two different schools. One was K to five and one was K to six. Okay. Um, but elementary schools. And then in between those two librarian eras. I was a compositor and motion graphics artist um, doing like <laughs> That's a wild television shit. and title sequences. Yeah, so I, I need a, I've been trying to think about a streamline like saying all this. Um, to, to me, those two careers are very linked because of visual storytelling, yeah. but I don't, I think to some people it seems like kind of a wild jump. Um, but also like a career that informs what I what I make in books and, and yeah. why. I um, you know, I, I say a lot, like I was a working artist, like they paid me to show up and sit at a desk and, and make art all day. <laughs> um, but it was a lot easier for me to see myself as a writer um, than an illustrator to start. And I, I you know, whatever, I don't regret the time <laughs> that it took, yeah. but yeah. Um, it took me longer than I wish it had to realize like I could do illustration as well. I think partly because like when you're working uh, in post-production, it was always to someone else's art direction or like brand specifications yeah. or you know, photo real visual effects. Yeah. Like I was executing in like cre constantly problem solving um, creative solutions, but it wasn't necessarily like my, uh, my own ideas. So I just kind of got locked up about that. Was that after effects? or was that mm -hmm. uh, yeah primarily after it's that. it's yeah. funny because I, th I think of uh and and uh when i think of your work i think of like this this like sort of shape-based 
and sort of a, a minimalist. Uh, I use the word simple sometimes, and I don't mean it in a, a disparaging way, but like a no, I know, I love simple that. aesthetic. And then you get when when you say you're doing post production stuff, and I go, oh, Adobe After Effects. That is so complicated, just as a program. <laughs> And like the you visuals of like <laughs> jumping between those seems so yeah. distant, yeah. but I know there's connections, but just visually it's yeah. like. I mean, it, it helps me to think about like Circle Under Berry is a great example. And some of these are snails. Like I really tried to think about, um, well, they're not, it's not like a narrative. It's not a sequential narrative in the same yeah. way that any book with characters is or like settings really. Um, and I tried to think of it as an animation that I was just pressing pause on. Um, like stuff happens in the page turn and then it resolves and here's, yeah. you know, here's where I want you to look. So that, that helps. I mean, you hear a lot about, um, character animators that go on to a picture book, um, illustration. And I think there's a lot of crossover when you're thinking about how something happens over time, yeah, um, is what we're doing a lot yeah. of in yeah, picture it's, books. So it's, yeah. I know, I know characters a lot of people, are not. I know I'm trying to think of like one, two, three, four four close friends that have moved on from animation into picture books over time. And, and I don't know if it's just the jobs in animation dried up, if their interest shifted, but the, yeah. the idea of like, how do you break down a story is consistent there with like comics with like, there's a crossover right. that, that is easily translatable. Like even I assume for you, when I think about um, pagination, I'm thinking about the beat mm -hmm. at which like, when's the best time to hit this this joke and like the page flip is is still like on a timeline in my brain. Right, right. And, and so like, we're, we're sort of in the same, uh, same ballpark as everybody else in that industry. Um, so today, uh, we're gonna make and we're gonna draw and we're gonna talk and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and rule of thumb for me is anybody, anybody that's on, if they wanna leave at any point, they're more than welcome to, don't hesitate, don't feel like you gotta be on for hours and hours. Um, if uh, just let me know and we'll be good to go. Uh, and then the other, okay. uh, the other question, well, the, I have some people that stay, I've had a couple of people that wanted to stay longer than I did. Yeah. Cause it was like, it's the, during the school year, I go until like midnight or one in the morning sometimes. I'm like, uh, I'm tired. Are you still <laughs> on summer? We're on summer. This is okay. the last summer one. Nice. The next one is the first day of school on uh, the 29th. Um, but uh, um, so don't, don't have, state if you need to leave of any sort it doesn't doesn't uh affect me beyond tears and, <laughs> and sadness and, uh but the other thing i was going to say was um oh my wife is back this week so she can document what materials we're using and i know that you're using scissors probably yeah but what are we using for <laughs> material wise like um i've got a pile of scraps it's all like color coded batches. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you painting on? Like, so, I get people um, asking this is... me this all the time and I, I get to finally ask someone else. Yeah. What is the paper? Yeah, I'm curious what you use as well. So this is newsprint, plain newsprint. Okay. newsprint. And um, I just paint the cheapest acrylic paints I can find, like the store brand acrylic is fine yep. with me. Um, and I generally don't use a brush, I like scrape scrape it it's like a very popular preschool art project scrape okay. painting <laughs> you just like squirt yeah. blobs of paint on the paper and like scrape it down so i use like old library cards or like old gift cards um there <laughs> we get in the mail a lot these like pizza restaurant coupons that are like that perfect like library card material so i'll be like oh i got got so many paintbrushes in the mail um those, I, and i don't know if it's like the cheap supplies do a couple things for me. I know this is not what you asked, but I'm going to no, 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 anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm um, invested, trust me. This yeah, is like, like one, they're just out. accessible yeah. and it, yeah. it helps you not feel so, like I did the, the thing with the glue where I thought you had to have fancy glue to be an illustrator, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's easier to, to not be so precious with art supplies than like five-year-olds use. But I like the, I like newsprint because it's, um, it's thin enough, like it's not, too thick. like it's pretty flimsy yeah um i think for a while i started with like watercolor paper but it was too thick and so once you start layer like layering things in a collage it was just a bit yeah, unwieldy yeah. i like it's thick I like and you this. see the edge 
Like yeah, if yeah. the pigment doesn't go all the way through, you see the edge. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, and I want, now I got weird I shadows. A little bit of shadow, yeah. but yeah. not like a ton. Um, so yeah, it's newsprint, newsprint, painted newsprint. I one of the things that I, I really have grown to appreciate, and I think that the sort of the materials you're using and the method that you use, and even like looking at circle and a berry, like look at we have a Daniel Miar. Um, I can't even say his last name. You got Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Mirares, uh, who we had on here before um, uh, months and months back. And like, it's interesting to see the, the difference in aesthetic, obviously, between the stuff that you're illustrating and he's illustrating. But I, at first, when I got into illustration, like for Kidlet, my perception was everything had to be super rendered. Everything mm -hmm. had to be like, uh, like look, looking at uh, um, David Shannon with uh, uh, you know, a case of the stripes and all this kind of stuff. I was yeah. like, oh, that's what everything has to be. And then I, I found out at one point, someone mentioned the idea of the accessibility for, for the kids to be able to draw what they're looking at and what they're mm -hmm. making. And so like the idea of using materials that they could actually get their hands on, right. Uh, right. the like simplicity of form. And, and so there's a, I don't know, do you know Jarrett Lerner? Mm -hmm. do you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah, he had mentioned course. that in a little post at one point. I was like, he reminded me of that. And I was like, oh, that's so smart. Like, I just forget that, like, there is that, like, you don't have to go big on everything because sometimes that could be daunting for a kid to look at and go, like, I can't live up to that. And, like, give them those, those, yeah. that, that easy access with, like, using glue sticks and right. using crayons. And, you know, and then you go look at someone like, even Daniel, when he was on, was using crayons. For mm -hmm. some drawings that he's doing, I'm like, I just, it's it's so smart, and I've grown to appreciate it to the point where like I'm trying to like even simplify mine, because I was from from my schooling, it was like I wanted to be the acrylic guy who do the mm. really cool paintings, and now I'm like, okay, I gotta I gotta like pare it back and get more into like that's why scissors and shapes have been fun. Yeah. So, yeah, um, and I, I do say that a lot too. Like it's accessible for kids, but I think like the the trick is actually like it makes it less intimidating for me <laughs> than uh, uh, things that seem sort of out of my control. Well, not e not even that. Like I, I I know that like looking at some of the like I'm just, I'm using this one as the example here, but um, what was it? There was one in in the circle underberry that I was like, oh, that's so smart. The like. Like even even just looking at stuff like the hummingbird and the the dragonfly, like you immediately know what they are, and they're primary. I mean, even the, the hummingbird is basically uh, almost monochrome, mm -hmm. and, or uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, monochrome. Yes, uh, but just like triangle, <laughs> and like how smart it is to use some of those shapes to make. I was uh, when we got into uh, when I saw the bear in this one the first time. I was like, I love that bear. Yeah, and like I'm I the like person them. who's gonna go in and put in like all this fur and be like, oh, I got to keep adding stuff to make it a bear. And like, no, you don't have to. And yeah, and, um, yeah. I tell my students all the time that um, minimalism is probably harder in my eyes than complexity, because every if you miscut one of those squares and it's not quite a square. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like people are gonna notice, and they're gonna, oh, that's not a, right, that's not a right. But, but that is kind of the, the charm. Yeah, and yeah. So, I, I, um, I think it's it's almost like a game of telephone where you know what a real bear looks like, mm -hmm. and how can you like communicate real bear like after four people have like described what one looks like <laughs> in a way. It's like what's the the ha, barest minute. That's not a word. No. Most yeah. bare minimum. Bare minimum. Okay. Now. <laughs> I might kick you off early. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I did an assignment with a bunch of animation students ages ago because I mean you know this just in general from from the film production side or the the um, uh, After Effects etc. That you're handing off files to people yeah. all the time mm -hmm. and you're having to work on a project that is not necessarily your aesthetic. Right. Um, and so what I would do is I'd have this assignment because they'd all talk about like you know I want to design characters and I'm like okay cool but is it a character that someone else can draw mm. and so I did this assignment where I'd give them like five minutes to draw out their character and then they had to pass their character to the person next to them and their person next to them had to recreate that character but they had three oh, minutes oh, cool. and slowly oh. break down that time 
So the last person has, you know, 10 seconds to draw the thing. And so they're drawing yeah. basic shapes. And, right. that, and then I, right. then it comes back to the original person and we go, okay, what do you need to add on to this to make it look like your character, but not go all the way back to the original? And most of the time it's broken down into like triangles yeah. and circles and things. Yeah. Oh, that's um, smart. And so it's like the base structure behind it. So if it's a bear, like most bears are like people draw an oval or a big thing with a small thing on top. <laughs> and like, right. you, you know, and, and uh, most of those kids get excited about all the details. Like I'm going to put a little pouch on their side that has flowers in it. Yeah. and like, do you really need that? Is that really right. important for this design? Right. So um, I, I definitely want to talk to you uh, about sort of the library and the education side and the, the like, the value of books as we go along but why don't we why don't we just um jump in i know that i have a i have a down shoot that i just flipped yeah. thing, but if you need to help I'm line and stuff up a little yeah let me know okay see you in a bit <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna watch it from my end um let me see i'm gonna try to get mine your your, your desk is already colorful I got like. I know. I I prepared. I like got out my Ziplocs. <laughs> is that how you store everything? Is in Ziplocs? Yeah. You know what? I I have no idea. I store everything in piles. <laughs> you know, some. I don't know how you are, but like, um, some collage artists are the like save every scrap of paper kind. Yeah. And I'm not. Like, I the desk I'm on right now is also like the kitchen table and like where I work. Like day job stuff so there's like I have to be a little mobile so I I don't really leave stuff out so yeah I'm like a pile I'm a pile person yeah I'm I'm a uh I would never zoom out and show my studio right now because it is an absolute mess it used to be messy yeah, and it's, it's gotten like even worse controlled. yeah it's gotten way worse since I started doing collage there's just paper everywhere and I I did buy a bin to store some of my paper but that even has um uh become a mess and and i do save but what i save most of the time are like things that i know i will use again so like i have a lot of times i'll use like black in a piece and so i'll save little scraps for like you know someone's open mouth or those kind of things uh, but yeah that's smart but then i have piles of just like junk uh like leftovers from previous ones uh, or uh. um you know if it's a really cool color awesome i'll save it if it is just another swatch of white like i have enough i can make that in an instant and so it's a it's a collection of things the hard part is just parsing through it at this point to find what i actually want <laughs> right there's right so much and i different. just like clip everything that's similar I, it's very I mean, messy. I should I should be doing what you're doing, which is the like Ziploc bags or something of the sort. I just know that it would never stay in those. I would end up moving it around too much, and then all of a sudden I got, got a big pile of, of mess, anyways. Yeah, uh, I, I also save like the, this bag that I just took. Actually, is like the leftovers from the last book I made. Um, called rounded around the year we go yeah. and I saved it all because I thought you know like in revisions if I need to adjust something like I want to have the same exact you know, like yeah color yeah and now it's like oh I feel like the book came out a week ago or so and now I can actually use this material because like it's done <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> which obviously it was done long before a week ago but there's something kind of um psychological maybe well, about that. One, of, one of the reasons why i got into collage not not just because of like the the fun of it like i like the shape aspect and and shapes with scissors or making shapes with scissors but one of the things that i like about it is i like texture and, and i know that you like texture too and sort of the the color and swatches um the advantage is you can make a bunch and save it yeah and if yeah. i'm working with just paint all of a sudden i really am caught in a if I if I have to remix it, it is a huge ordeal to figure out. Like if it's right. months after Maybe. I finish, yeah, I how know do you I do gotta figure that? out what color this is? And like I um, I'm starting another uh, one of the penny book series that I've uh, been doing with uh, Kim Wilson, and 
I have to pull out the book, pull out the originals that I've done before and try to match the colors. I know what oh. colors, like I know oh, what yeah. inside yeah. is, but trying to get the right mixture, the right exact tone is such right. a pain. Um, yeah, that's difficult. What do you do? Like, I, I saw, do you know Faith Prey, um, the author and illustrator? Uh, she posted something recently that was like, um, kind of like an accordion sketchbook of all of her development work from a particular book. So it had like character studies and colors and like, it was almost like a little like story Bible. I was like, well, that's kind of smart. No, I, don't, I, I, I probably should have that. I have some sample pieces that I like, if I need to match a certain character, I pull out specific little like character studies that I did, but only I only did one character study for each. And it's the publisher wanted to see all the characters together at one point. And so I just use that same image over and over again. Um, uh, but yeah. It's, yeah. it's more so like for me, it's, it's not the base character. I can figure that out um, in the sense of like one has a pink shirt and blue pants on, et cetera. But the challenge is in those books, there's multiple coins. And so there's uh, like the dime uh, versus the quarter versus the nickel all have a slightly different hue to differentiate them and i have to go through and match all that which is an absolute pain yeah uh, but <laughs> how much get... do you like do you do a lot of fixing digitally after your uh, 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 painting sometimes more so just to like clean up edges mm -hmm. um, i i would prefer that the original be the thing and so I try to get as accurate as possible when I'm painting. Yeah. But yeah. I know that like, even with collage, I imagine you do the same thing that there's like every once in a while you'll end up with a color that's, or a little texture that's a little bit off. And I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't, but I go back and I'll, I'll tweak. Um, like if there's a little spot on a texture that just is in the wrong spot or, um, you know, the, the, color is slightly off in one section, I might adjust it ever so slightly in Photoshop. Yeah, but. yeah. So, but, so you know Photoshop, so then After Effects is really just, I mean, that's what they, what they say is Photoshop with the timeline, right? You I do that. I have used, no, I've used After Effects. It's just, it's a- Oh, I see. What I, my, my point with After Effects is it's just got so many bells and whistles yeah. compared to scissors and paint <laughs> right so like, right right that, that you sort I of have to know how to like wield it yeah, yeah that's i mean i am not good with after effects i'm okay with uh premiere and some of the oh, other okay. adobe yeah, things yeah. but the the way that you operate the timeline is slightly different than what i did for animation uh, back in the day and so i i'm still caught up in the way that i used to operate and fighting against it um yeah so tell me Tell me a little bit about sort of your, I mean, you mentioned the idea of being a librarian. Was that while you made some of the books like writing and that kind of stuff? Or was that post being a um, It was both actually, it was pre and post. <laughs> okay. I, my first day of school, my first year teaching was September 11th. <gasps> so it, in Virginia, yeah, it is, so it has been, it's been a while. Like that was long before I started writing. Um, by the way, this is like what I make when I don't know what to start doing. Is fruit? Apple, apple, pear, pencil, boat. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's okay. Um, so let me think, think about this. What did you say? So I was a librarian like in the early 2000s. And um, I was just a couple of years out of college at that point. Okay. Um, and I, I don't think I'd ever really considered being a librarian, but I like it. It's funny now, like I see very clearly now, like why or how I got there. Um, Cause I was like, you know, like a book kid. I was like sort of interested in teaching, but I didn't want to have my own classroom. Like not that kind of yeah. <laughs> teaching. Um, <laughs> and so, so, okay. So just to date it, like it was early 2000s and I was working in a pretty small, um, a kind of rural school district in, um, in Virginia. But they had like really, really innovative, um, uh, like educational technology at the time. And this was like long, this is a while, you know, like a while back. But there was some, I, I worked with, worked for some really like forward thinking um, 
like instructional technology teams. Yeah. And I got like really interested in um, what you could do with technology. And so I have, was doing, I was also in grad school at the time. I was getting a master's in education in curriculum and instruction to be like a school librarian in Virginia. You had to be um, like certified in the same way that classroom teachers are. Yeah. Not, um, not in library sciences, but just in. Right. It was, huh. it was, um, okay. yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of crossover, I think, but I'm not like technically don't have a library science degree. There was a, the concentration was school library media. Okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah. And so, but at the, so it, I was in grad school and I was doing like a big, I don't know what they call them. Like my big pro thesis kind of project was on, um, students creating digital portfolios. And so we were putting things on like, like floppy disks to CDs. Like it was, you know, sort of that <laughs> era. And then I found out about, um, we used, used Apple products in my district and I got into um, like iMovie and iDVD. Okay. And um, I thought it was really cool. Like, so kids were making like basically DVDs of all of their like, work as as like a portfolio sort of piece um and then I, I started noticing like how I as a like person was responding to um what I know now as motion graphics but like I wasn't clear then that's what it was but it was like dvd menus right do you remember those how they would like yep. Yep. loop and, and be kind of um like a short form of this of the movie like in in 30 seconds and i thought that was interesting like i think that was my first sort of clue that like short um like short form was interesting for me um and then i felt limited by the idvd templates that you could use to like put all your movies on <laughs> like i was like who are the people that like make these templates and that's when i learned that it was like called motion graphics it was a thing that you could like do and learn and be and so after five years of teaching i moved to los angeles and learned how to do that um which is pretty like i don't know dramatic that is, <laughs> that is a, that's a big move it's a big move <laughs> i was like in my late 20s and um my sister and i just like drove across the country together my like air conditioning in my car broke. I remember that really well. And um, we like got to Los Angeles and I went to, um, it was like a trade school for a year and it was primarily a um, avid editing train oh, like, okay. training program. And they had a small like motion graphics program and like a small sound design program. Um, and so it was not art school by any means. Um, it was definitely like, how to like learn the the like the software packages to like yeah. execute the art. Yeah. Um, sort of a trade school. So, more yeah, than, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I started working um, uh, primarily in television, some like film titles and um, like video game trailers for a while. Um, and as I was working in that, like I I liked it, but I also was like missing the book part of being a librarian. Um, and so it never had occurred to me when I was first a librarian to become an author. Like I just knew that I loved books, picture books. Yeah. But yeah, but once I was away from them, I was like, wait a minute, like I really like them. Um, so that's when I started writing. I would like sometimes go to Starbucks on like lunch hour and like write a little bit and um, got sort of involved in figuring out like, what's what and what's where in our sort of you know publishing industry and um and started writing but like i said earlier like i was work you know i was doing compositing and, and motion graphics but i was primarily just writing um because it took me it took me much longer to sort of put put all the pieces together for for both well, writing and illustrating was there a moment that you look back and go like oh this is where i made that decision or that call to like jump back into the the sort of kid lit realm per se or or was um, it more to... yeah 
Yeah, you know, it was kind of cumulative. Actually, I'm thinking like probably around the time or even before I started writing, I started a blog. I kind of forgot about that. Um, is it still and out at the there? Time, what's that? <laughs> is, it, is it still out you there? No, know, I took it down <laughs> recently, but only recently. Um, it was called Design of the Picture Book. And um, there was a like a motion graphics site called Art of the Title. Okay. And I just like totally borrowed like how the, <laughs> the phrasing went. Um, but the that was like a newsletter kind of blog thing about like analyzing title sequences. And I was like, oh, could I do the same thing for picture books? Like use what I know about motion graphics and then and, and sort of therefore graphic design and just like talk about books that I think are doing interesting things um, as a way to like be near them again, yeah. sort of. Um, and so I did, like, I met so many interesting people doing that and um, connected with, like, publishers. Like, my um, my book that just came out last week, like, my publicist is somebody that I've known since I started that blog in 2011, but it's the first time we've ever, like, worked together. Um, like, as me as a creator, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to, like, the <laughs> blogger. So, like, that's pretty cool. Um, I... Okay, yeah, that's what I'm. Oh, so so then I I was like mostly doing the blog, and then I was like, wait, okay, I actually could also write. Like, doing the blog was really useful for um, like studying what I what I liked in picture books, like what I was drawn to as a reader. Yeah. Um, what right. I was drawn to visually, um, and I think it was, it's not something I miss doing necessarily, but I think having a practice um or having an intentional practice of like studying the way books work was was really useful uh, so it probably helped you that. analyze sort of yeah, your interests and refine it's it's i mean the the equivalent of of when i work with students oftentimes they have an idea of what they want to do but they don't know how to um honestly justify by it, but more so like how to communicate that idea to someone else and sometimes writing it down in in some term or talking about it just in general like without any preconceived notion of, of I have to do a presentation on this or what have right. you have to get them to sort of go oh I see the connections I'm trying to make and now I can actually speak about it in some effective manner right 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 and people seem to respond really well to it like um you know it was before like instagram it was before um well instagram <laughs> I, <laughs> I think i uh it was there was like kind of a really nice like blog era there for a while you're you're dating yourself quickly I know. With those... <laughs> I know. I i'm, I'm of the it. same age so i'm not I'm... <laughs> I can't but, help it. what was what was before instagram just facebook my <laughs> Face uh, Friendster, uh, maybe. I don't uh, know. I'm trying to think of all the. There, there were a bunch of blogs that were uh, not Blogspot. What was the one that was the? Oh, uh, uh, oh, I can't think of it. Uh, something Fire. Uh, oh, it's gonna, it's fire? gonna drive me. Yeah, it's gonna drive me nuts. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so, did you like in in working with? the the kids in the library <clears throat> obviously you know having a a vested interest in um sort quick of six, by the way sorry mark i just thought um what was i dabbing colors have you seen oh these? <clears throat> yeah i lucy ruth comments turned me on to these and mike chicatello uses them a lot and, and like i've been seeing like jennifer mann use them too like if you don't know these, you have to know these. They're like um, sticks, but they're tempera paint. Is that the right word? Tempera paint. Yeah. So it's like paint, but it it's comes me. out, but you like draw with it. It dries really quickly. Huh. Another <coughs> very child friendly. I thought when, when you said the stick, I was thinking it was going to be a, a, a bingo marker. Oh, cool. Which, oh, that's cool. I wonder if those, like, I've never seen someone use those, but I imagine those could be used effectively in some manner. Yeah. For Probably for like um, like large assembly yeah. drawing. I mean, um, I, okay. I, I, I use I, Posca I markers, but those talking about something fire. Yeah. Oh, I was. Um, I can't think. Of, it doesn't matter what what it was. Um, 
I, I was going to say, uh, with with knowing sort of the the audience of of Kidlet, i.e., those those little kids and whatnot. Do you think that you have? And and I want you to brag for a minute. Do you think that you have insight over what kids want more than your average person, or even what some folks uh, in the industry assume? Like, uh, I think I make assumptions yeah. about what kids like and know that I'm probably way off on yeah. some of it. Like, I'm like, oh, they'll think this is funny. And <laughs> clearly they don't. But I imagine my brain just because of the access and the, the constant uh, connection with kids. I imagine you have a deep insight into that. Well, yes and no. I mean, I think... Um so much of like so many books can be uh, like that what am i saying here like books that i've made some books that i i would not as a librarian have like brought to like this big like crowd right like they're sort of a different type of book um sure. I'm, i like sort of have story time on the brain right now because that was like very much influenced the way i just made um round and round the year we go yeah. um, in ways that I don't always prioritize um, because there's many ways to use a book like story time is one of them. Um, that said, I don't, I, I have a hard time. I have, have a hard time with matching what I know kids in the like very general sense will respond to and the type of book that I want to make. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like sometimes what I really want to say as an artist is like maybe not going to be like the biggest blockbuster and like that's okay too. Um, but you know, when do you sort of, when do you, I'm, I'm trying to avoid saying the word commercial because I don't, I feel like I, I don't mean that to sound like a bad word. Yeah. Um, but when do you sort of do something a little more um, intentional for an audience versus saying what you want to say as an artist? And I think yeah. there's a really interesting overlap for artists who have every right to like say things the way they want to say it, but also like we're in a business where yeah. like Sales success. Matter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of one of the things I'm sort of thinking been thinking through recently i just it's it's one of those things where like knowing what hits with a kid even if it's not on the commercial side of things or on the the sales side of things um i imagine that just like like when i read my books to kids at events or things of the sort what i think is funny i don't think translates to every kid that's out there and right. I, can see, I can see people roll their eyes at some of the jokes that i make or i can see you know and and obviously not everybody's type of humor is going to be the same from person to person but yeah um, yeah i i imagine though that just and again i'm i'm making this up here but bear with it but uh that just having years of dealing with kids that you, you kind of pick up on the age range maybe better um, than what um, your average, you know, no, like, yeah, I do wish that were true. Maybe more true. I don't oh, know really? that that's okay. necessarily always true for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I'm fighting with like what I want to, what I want to say versus like what I know is probably the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> so would, are there any like thinking, thinking about, about that in general, are there tips that you could relay for said audience though? of like universal uh things that are are you know like i'm trying to think of a good example like the equivalent of of don't play down to kids. um oh yeah are, you know they're, they're smarter than what people give them credit for or right um, right are there things that like you experience doing that that now definitely you hold on to when you create your work you whether know, it be personal or I will say like this is kind of not exactly what you're asking but i definitely like give a lot of side eye to the way writers particularly portray librarians in books um <laughs> because, because sometimes it feels like 
oh, if I put a librarian in my book, then like librarians are going to love it. <laughs> and like, I feel like you can tell when someone like just inserted the librarian because they want the like librarian <laughs> approval. Not so, all librarians wear glasses. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, no, but generally, I mean, I think like that is like wise advice that I think all of us are, are keeping top of mind. Like, just because they are younger than us does not mean that they are not fully formed people with like thoughts and ideas and taste. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's something to keep in mind, but I don't, I think we're all doing that. I, just, I mean, it's, I hope we're all doing that. I hope so. I mean, I, I, I play down. Oh, I don't play down to my audience. I just am down in general in the types of jokes that I like. Uh, I'm a, <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a uh, blue comedy uh, type person. And so I think that I'm never going to be the one who probably has like a really like beautiful sentimental uh, story mm, uh, mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. But I also know that like, I don't want to just do really goofy jokes that are, are frivolous yeah. or, you know, like there's, there's a way to, to, uh, how do I, not qualify, but to, uh, um, make a smart joke, even though it's a potty humor, it's a smart way to do it. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's, I think that's why I think the cool thing, like being a librarian reminded me, like, I tried to look, by the way, I tried to make a glue stick and that is very not successful. <laughs> okay. Bye. Um, one thing that was like really cool as a librarian was seeing how quickly, how fast, how loyal kids are to books that they fall in love with. Mm. And um, if they don't have to be in my books by any means, and obviously like now I'm not in a library, so like I can't force them to love my books anyway. <laughs> um, but it, it always indicated to me like what an interesting, like what a great audience that is to work for because of how much they love the, what it is that you're making. Right. Like, so again, it doesn't have to be my books, but just knowing that I'm creating work for an audience who can fall in love so completely. Um, that's, that's yep. nice. I try to keep that. No, wait, were you making, were you making books? Like did your books come out while you were a librarian? Um, yeah, my first few did. I had a, um, my first book that came out was a middle grade novel that came out while I was teaching. And so did my first three picture books. Um, and that was kind of fun. Like the school, my school, like, um, was really like, we, we had this like after school, like cookie party, like the day my novel came yeah. out, like that was pretty cool. Um, but those, those cute. kids were constantly screaming, we have to hear this story again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. One of, um, one of the books that came out while I was teaching, it's called, um, everything you need for a tree yep. house. And that one is like definitely not like like I probably wouldn't have done I, I could have like maybe come up with some interesting programming around it and like librarians and teachers do very cool things with like building your dream, you know, tree house or whatever. Yeah. Um but it's not like a like a loud, rowdy read aloud. No. <laughs> right? No, but no. I did I read it once with a group of kids, first graders, and um this one little girl was like, um, I loved the way all those words sounded, but I didn't know what they meant. And it was such a nice compliment. Like she was really like, um, like I believed her, right? Like I think she yeah. really meant like, I liked it. And she just didn't know why she liked it. That felt cool for me. Like not everything has to be perfectly understood to be yeah. experienced. <laughs> so. I don't know what you just read to me, but it was so cool. <laughs> but I think I liked it. <laughs> yeah. And that one, yeah. that one was illustrated by Emily Hughes, which is uh, it was. Yeah. Nice work. It's great. Yeah. The uh, yeah. Yeah, and some of the stuff special. that they did with um, uh, who was the publisher? Uh, was it Flying Eye? I'm trying to think who who some of their books were with that I I got ages ago and have been a fan of theirs as well. Em yeah, Emily um, had a book called wild which yes. was maybe her first picture book that came yep. out with um with flying eye yeah okay there yeah. You go. I, was, I was trying to connect like i have a i have a big collection of books back here and they're 
it's gotten so not necessarily expansive, but there's enough there that my brain can't remember all the ones that are in there. In fact, when we have people on, my wife always asks me like, do we have this book? And I have to go, like, I don't remember if we have that one or if we have another one. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a constant yeah, search was... to find them all. Um, great. So with, with sort of, um, the the making that you're doing now and like some of the the books that you're working on and as, as, especially with like is is the new book done because I, I i don't know if i've seen it yet or or um i guess i have because it was on instagram but i'm just not recalling no, the uh um, that's okay it just came out last week is it's all cut paper too right it is yeah yeah and is it do you find that um the the, the what was I going to say? The do you find that the cut paper side of things? Because I, I, you know, I'm dealing in the same realm, and I know there's limitations to it. Mm. And I'm wondering, mm -hmm. are there? Do you find that as you start to write and ideas come out, that you're constantly thinking, how do I put this into cut paper? Or Ooh, know, yeah, that yeah. relationship between word and and material is what I'm sort of wondering about. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Actually, like that was kind of a, um, that was a hard one for me because when I first wrote that, I was really careful to write the text in such a way that I felt like I was writing things that I could execute in the art. Okay. Um, yeah. And by thing, I mean like things, <laughs> like Circle Under Berry and some of these are snails like don't have characters yeah. in them, um, humans or otherwise. Do I like this? I can't tell. Um, and so I, I knew that it was a concept that I wanted to illustrate, but um, I wanted to be very cautious as I was writing it to make sure that I wasn't like writing myself out of like possibility <laughs> <laughs> as the illustrator. And um, and I, my editor acquired it with like one piece of sample art and the text. And then she and my art director were like really like gentle with this feedback, but they were like, you know, <laughs> we really should see some kids in this book like experience. So round and round the year we go is, a, is about the months of the year. And yeah, each yeah. spread is like a poem from, um, you know, set in one of the months. And so I, I had, I had written it in a very precise way to like, just talk about the things that exist in the months. Um, and they were like, you know, we really should see some kids like experiencing these things. And I was like, oh gosh, shoot. <laughs> like, I don't know how to do that. What am I going to do? And, and my editor was like, you know, Carter, like kids are just circles. Like you can do this. Um, so that was really like useful encouragement. <laughs> and also like, I couldn't back out. <laughs> I wanted to make a book and I wanted to be the one to illustrate it. Um, yourself into a corner. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I, I did it and it was hard for me while I was doing it. And I, um, but I did it. I did it. And I'm, you know, proud of what it became. And I, um, it was difficult. Uh, <laughs> it was really difficult. I know that like when I saw that image uh, of, of the cover and all that kind of stuff, the, I was like, okay. Um, I got to figure out, and I, it was one of the questions I had for you specifically today was sort of like, yeah, how do you decide what level of shape to use for those kids? Because that, um, yeah, the, the, yeah, <clears throat> there was way that. more detail than I sort of am comfortable with. Um, and it was a lot of the same consideration, like, how do I, how do I show, like, what this expression should be while using like as few lines as possible um and being consistent like where like is my level of detail the same across all of the pages uh -huh. um and i just yeah like it was it was it was challenging well i saw challenging. i saw someone um way back in the chat here let me see if i can go find it uh M E H R N A Z underscore illustration says, how do you make your characters? And so like, even with the idea of, of even outside of the character element, like, you know, people or things of the sort, I'm wondering, is there a method to, 
like obviously it's circles is a way to to make heads and things of the sort um but i'm wondering is there a decision process and lots of like tests that you do ahead of time or is it more like just gut feeling um you know how, how do you actually break down the shapes that you choose <laughs> yeah i that's a gut that's a gut feeling. I um, <laughs> I wish there was a I wish there was a better answer. And I I like I don't know I I haven't tried to replicate that process yet. So I don't know actually how like replicable it is. Uh, and that's not true. I mean, of course it's repl replicable. Like I have my own reference. Um, I just try to like take what I know is true from doing like minimalist shape design mm -hmm. um, and do the same thing with the characters. Um, I'm not, I'm pr it's probably not like accurate at all to like true proportions of kids <laughs> like yeah. where they're, you know, like I know there's like, they're this many heads tall and like, if they look, you know, to look younger, like don't give them a neck, like that sort of thing. Um, but that actually is useful because it just, it, it gives you limits. Like, I think what I'm always looking for is, is limits. How can I make this look like something in as little? Yeah. Sort of How far can you push that of like peel away or add to something really simple to get there? The, uh, right. one, right. one of the, one of the things that I've, you know, I worry about in my own work is that same thing, but it's, it's less on the, like, character design and it's more on the complexity like how how much do i need to put in a scene for people to understand the whole scene i was i was talking with a student the other day um a senior that wants to do kids books and they were they were not super confident in having to draw really complex scenes mm -hmm. i said you know what if you set up one scene that shows us the sky and the ground plane then you don't have to show us the sky again that we understand if you just draw the ground plane and leave the page white up above we make that leap of faith to go hey i bet you there's sky above that ground plane because i've seen right. it right and same thing with right like shapes like you know if you if you have that bear that is sort of squarish you know in its in its structure if we see the back of us of that bear's head and it's that same basic shape we're not going to go, oh, that's a bunny this time. We're going to go, oh, that's the bear again. Because right, you right. And so I, it's, it's interesting to hear, especially because like, I think of your work as, as um, so like crisp mm. in its design, like, and, and sort of fundamental in its shape design too, that like, you know, some people are going to get out scissors and try to cut out or, or an exacto blade and try to cut out like lace work into their, right. their stuff and like right. that's not me i'll draw lace work i won't cut it out uh <laughs> and so right. those right. Kind of decisions are always fascinating to me to hear how people sort of operate yeah in that environment. yeah it, it, it's true i i also am just not a very confident sketcher um i'm getting i'm getting better at it and i I have to be like in an active practice of, of doing so in order to like maintain that like confidence about it. Yeah. But I often, I often feel much more comfortable, like just like now, like just cutting and arranging and seeing um, where to make adjustments as opposed to like sketching something. And then like, like you say, like using an exacto knife to like create all of those shapes. Um, what what when you're when you're sketching like i i have the same challenge right now that the sketch for me is always um is challenging because i like to play with the material you know what i mean like i, I want to sit down and sort of go oh well what shape is going to be the best today kind of situation and a sketch sometimes gets too refined and i'm wondering same uh, thing, thing with like interesting yeah like, I think I can cut out a shape relatively easy with scissors, but the accuracy is never going to be the same as me drawing with a pencil and erasing it and moving stuff to the side. And so like, like I'm working with this sketch. I don't know if you're, if you're able to see the feed, but I'm working with this sketch Ooh, today cool. of 
some uh, some poodles in a gym, buff poodles in a gym, <laughs> and a, a skinny poodle coming in. Um, and that's this is the floor plane that I'm getting sort of set up right now. But um, like my sketch here is not going to look like the finish just because I'm working with scissors and that's pencil or that's you know pen. And right, I'm wondering right. sort of for yours, yeah, what level like. Sorry, this is a long, long-winded question. Uh, no, no. <laughs> just sort of, okay. what? <clears throat> how do you manage that level of expectation from sketch to finish in yours? Is sort of what I'm getting at. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. That's a, <clears throat> that's a good. That's a really good question. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I often, um, I did, I did a round of sketches, um, like for round and round. There we go again. I'm thinking about those, and like I really. I never really had the experience that I've heard illustrators talk about where it's like the sketch had so much like interesting life to it and then it gets all lost in the final, right? Like I've heard illustrators say that and I never really had that experience. And then once I was like sketching and, and like knowing there's like a there's like a brain thing where like I know it's it's not final art, so there's maybe more I don't know more less pressure or more life yeah. like that sort of thing yeah. like i finally had that experience and i was like oh this is what they're talking about where like <laughs> the sketch looks so like dynamic and free and fun and like kind of haphazard in a really intentional way and then like you go to finalize it and it's like lost that yeah. um so i don't know i don't know i, I don't know how to like maintain sort of the freedom of a sketch um well how how detailed are your sketches in the final how detailed are your sketches in general what? like are you like, look at me right now i'm like how do i make a turtle i don't know does that look like a head where does it where does it go but if i had to draw a turtle like i don't even know where i would start my sketches are like that <laughs> like there's a person who's doing like a high five I'm very, um, not very, like, precise. Okay, this turtle's got to go. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I I run into the realm of my sketches get too refined and that that kind of thing. But I think that I'm I'm starting to get to a point, especially, I haven't done a book with, which is crazy because I've been doing collage now for a year and a half. And I haven't had the opportunity to do a book in collage. Uh, and just because the the contracts I've been getting have been for uh, pre-existing IP, uh, uh, okay. okay, or not IP, but but for uh, uh, you know a preset style that was prior to me doing collage, and so I haven't had the chance to really play around with it. But I don't know what I'm going to do for sketching for some of those, because it de definitely will look different, and I'm worried that the you know art director or whoever it is is going to go, um, that's not what we wanted. You know, you said this was going to be a big <laughs> right. circle, and now it's a square. Like, right, uh, right. Yeah, but that's how my I scissors mean, cut it. <laughs> I guess, and then it depends on, like, what's your working relationship with whoever your editor yeah. or art director is. Because, like, are they new to you? Do they know, like, what what this sketch turns into? Or are they like, no, that's not going to cut it because I can't even tell what that is. Yeah, this it's i think i need to get in that you're right the the working relationship is going to be the thing that defines some of that and also saying ahead of time like the sketch won't be exact to the finish and right, you'll, have to, right. you'll have to trust the process uh, <laughs> don't get in the way of the right art. when really like the actual truth is like i don't really know how i'm gonna pull this off yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's uh that's pretty common <laughs> But do you like living in that that sort of space of like not knowing exactly where it's going, like watching you cut some of these shapes um, or like even the, the turtle, like the turtle? Yeah, I mean maybe you don't like the turtle in the end, but there's a there's a playfulness in sort of like oh I wonder if this shape will work, I wonder if this will work, and right, right. I think that also is one of the reasons why I find sketching difficult um, because I don't know. Like I want to get my hands on it in order to figure it out. And maybe there's some world in which like collage, like simple collage sketching is a thing. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it also has a lot to do with my 
with working in, in motion graphics and visual effects or like compositing in particular, like I'm at the end of the pipeline. All of the decisions have been made for like, oh. the composition of the shot. Like I'm just assembling all the elements and like making yeah. it look like a cohesive, you know, final, but often like the process is like start to finish on one shot, start to finish on another shot. It's not a lot of like, um, it's a lot, a lot of like finishing what you start is well is yeah like exactly what i just said so i think <laughs> that for me is why sketching is hard because i i'm used to just like having all the elements and going straight to the final which is not realistic for like a 40 page picture book <laughs> obviously um but i think that's i think that's one of the reasons i get kind of hung up on sketches is like i don't i want to just like hurry up and finish the picture instead of like planning the picture right <laughs> um do you ever find like i i mean i don't know if this this rings true for you but for me the idea that i would love to work on a project for in uh, and i know it's not the way the industry works but i would love to work on a project wherein they just said we'll see what it looks like in the finish and we'll buy it if we like it <laughs> Uh, you mean like finish the whole book yeah. or just finish like a, a spread like, or two? In a way, like I feel like, uh, and maybe this is me being a bit presumptuous here, but I, I feel like the finishes are always going to look better than my sketch. Even though my sketch is more lively, I think the finish, like putting color in things and the like textures and stuff that just don't come in through in the, in the sketch are going to add so much, but you don't really really see that in that sketch stage because it's line work or it's like I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing a black and white or, or a sketch version of a collage and then have to do collage it again. Uh, right, right, right. I wish there was some like way to just say like you and it, maybe not that I finished the whole book, but I wish there was a project where there was just a lot of faith in, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. in the process. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Try to find. I don't know. The, the planning part is like, I'm a planner. Like, I really am satisfied by planning. But um, yeah, it, uh, the, the trick, I think, is maintaining like the playfulness throughout, even when you're like executing what you know something uh -huh. should be looking like. I, I find, and, and some of this is literally just, and part of the reason why I like collage is just the unpredictability. And it is yeah, so yeah. it is so hard to sort of like somehow make that make sense to someone or or uh, for people to understand that like that's part of the process because we do work in an industry that like you said is is built on sales and built on um, you know return on investment. Let's put it right. that way. And right. then all of a sudden to go, you know what? I want you to risk all your investment without knowing if the return is going to be there. Yeah, because I've got this like cool idea for like this triangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about sort of um, the, the aspect of writing and handing it off to someone else. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. Have you done that before? No, have you no, written I haven't, someone else I, to illustrate? I've had, a, I've had a few people on that have done that. Uh, like Adam Rex and Bob Shea and some other uh -huh, folks. Uh -huh, um, yeah, yeah. And I imagine that there's probably a difference of opinion in everybody <clears throat> on, on sort of how that works. But tell me a little bit about your sort of take on it. Is You said you like it, but what, what do you like about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, I think the mark <laughs> of a great picture book writer is somebody who is not... Um, not super controlling with how the like whole thing visually is executed like it's interesting because you have to think visually while also not really writing visually yeah. um my job as the writer is to allow you to like come alongside and do really interesting things that like you know make the the, the whole you know more interesting than either part um i really like the puzzle of that it's like leaving something out in order to make a better book is like it's it's counter to 
you know, everything that you learn about like writing, like writing descriptively, like you sort of have to unlearn, unlearn that. Um, And I think it's really, I think it's satisfying to like, well, I mean, it requires a great amount of trust, but, and I think some people, um, I think the people that are not in this industry, like don't understand that maybe like, it seems unusual that like you would just hand off your manuscript to someone else to like figure out what it looks like. Um, I, I don't, no, I really like that. I really like what, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's collaborate, it's collaborative, but also kind of not. Um, I like that is, quite a bit. Is there, um, is there a person who is your favorite artist? You, no, I'm, just, I'm not going to get into you. Uh, <laughs> just tell me which one you thought was a real dud. Um, so, uh, but that, that idea of like, did, did you have say the idea of handing it off to someone else i guess the, yeah. the question i have is do you have a say at all in who it gets handed off to okay yeah and yeah if so do you like i know writers and so i hear about like oh they sent the sketches and i have to go through them and i know that side of it but i'm wondering with you being the artist as well where where does that come into play do you ever look back and go like oh that's not what i would have done or is it always sort of like oh that's surprising that's not what i would have done <laughs> yeah it's the second okay. it's any time that is oh that's not what i would have done is like oh cool like thank goodness this person knew how to do it that way <laughs> yeah um i i think also just being an artist like i always knew how to talk about art so i think with my editors it was easier to say like I'm not saying like, like hire Daniel Meares for this book or I quit, right? Mm-hmm. Like I can't really do that. <laughs> However, I can say like the way he does X, Y, or Z, like I think would be a really good match for this type of text. Or it's even sometimes maybe not talking to specific artists, but, but just describing like the vision, overall vision for the book. Like if something should be like really bold and graphic versus like, I don't know, like dream watercolor vistas right like the what is the text actually sort of looking for um and i you know i've been lucky to be in great conversations with my editors about like who i went want to work with and like what i'm sort of thinking but i I always would try to frame it in like like what it's uh, what do i want this book to feel like not like um yeah not like hire this person or or i'm out i mean i assume that they have the final say on that yeah so. yeah and you know but i i've gotten to weigh in quite a bit and i totally understand why um why publishers you know sort of keep um keep artists and illustrators like, sort of separate because like your work is different like my job is to not is not to tell you what to do <laughs> uh yeah. you are an expert in what you do for that for you know for a reason um but i think there's to be sort of a part of of the process is is really cool and satisfying. Do you, with, with were any of the people that you worked with someone that you specifically said though that like this is the person? Um. Or, or suggested or was it like have they all been yeah, like, collaborative? Kind of, in the sense of- kind of can't really remember. I remember. <laughs> um, I remember telling my editor I want like speaking of Daniel today. Like I had I really wanted to make a book with him. Um, but we had sort of talked about it like abstractly. Um, yeah. So when he, you know, when he agreed to do the book that we did together, it was like, oh yeah, I've been like wanting this for a long time. Um, it was like finally the right, sort of the right project. Um, so yeah, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. It's, uh, no, I've, I've never been in that. I've heard lots of people talk about these situations and I know that there's like, the separation of church and state when it comes to uh, how, you're, <laughs> yeah. how you're supposed to interact with with folks. Um, but I know that also, like, I've worked now enough on uh, the Penny Book series that, like, I actually, without my without my editor's knowledge, I contacted Kim and said, like, can I chat with you about the manuscript ahead of no, time? No. And, like, yeah, I love that. Like, it's, it's not that I don't trust that they would be valuable in the conversation it's more so like i just literally need this dump this dumb question answered right and if right. i can right. like if i don't have to go through a mediary to get it done right that'll speed up the process <laughs> yeah.
you know, but, I, had, I have worked with such great people that like in most cases, I like already knew them a little bit on the internet. So it, it felt natural to like just continue like yeah. a friendship yeah. <laughs> as opposed yeah. to like, we're not allowed to, you know, speak. <laughs> Um, You're not my friend anymore. But you know, one thing I think I have a book called Bikes for Sale um, that Zachariah O'Hara yep. illustrated um, yep. know, four or five Thank years you. ago. And that one, I remember specifically, um, like I was already a fan of his. And so when my editor was like, hey, like, I think, what do you think about approaching Zach? Um, and I, so of course, like even before she finished her sentence, I was like, yeah, 100%, like definitely. Yeah. Um, Zach, and you're already in. <laughs> right, right. But one of the things that she said was like, you've created like kind of this weirdo, like kooky little neighborhood. And um, Zach makes such like interesting people. Like I think like the way he would populate this little weird neighborhood that you created would be, could be really interesting. And so, um, so Zach took the project, which was like great. I was so like thrilled with um, and he illustrated like little critter people like they're not humans at all they're like they're animals yeah. and so it was so it was so cool to sort of reflect back and think like oh like one besides like him being you know a fantastic illustrator like one of the reasons was like we liked how he made people and sort of just made this assumption um, like without him <laughs> that the neighborhood would be full of, of people. And like, that was like a really, that was a great like picture book moment when you are sort of have, like in, in my head, I could picture what Zach's people looked like. And then what Zach delivered was like, even like, you know, quirkier and weirder and like cooler. I'm trying um, to think, have I seen a, a Zachariah O'Hara person? Yeah, you have, you have. Um, what what there, books have you done that have people? I've, I've, all I can see. The book's called um, The Teacher's Pet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there's people in that. All of his, um, they all are like dressed really cool and like they just are, they just look cool. So, and the text actually has a line in it that says something like, the people stayed thirsty for something, um, which we never changed because even though they weren't like people, it just, it's still, still made sense yeah so made sense for the text so stuff like that is, is really satisfying and actually like that's an example i talk about a lot as a picture book writer when you're sort of letting um the illustrator like do their thing i what i had imagined that book to be like was um like i can like literally not cut paper and talk at the same time <laughs> pause for a second um i had Im imagined like two like people, I guess, um, that would ride their bikes in different routes in this park. And then in the story, their bikes like crash or break for various yeah. reasons. And then when their bikes are fixed by the bike shop guy, it's like the bikes remembered their old routes. And that's how the friends would meet each other. Cause like the bikes remembered like where they used to go. Yeah. Um, so one of the lines of text was they'd never ridden this way before because my brain was saying, oh, okay, like they're taking new pathways in this park. Like they've just literally never ridden this way. Um, and like, spoiler, the way Zach illustrated it was this like great page turn and the text is the same. They'd never ridden this way before. And Zach had presented, um, or Zach had put them on this illustration on this like cool, double, not double decker, what's it called? Tandem bicycle, where the bike yep. shop guy had fixed up yep. like the two bikes into one. And it was such a, it was, I don't know if he tried the other way or if it always occurred to him to do it that way. Like that is kind of the magic of working with a um, separate writer and illustrator. Like he took that text and did something that was visually so much more interesting. Like the page turn is so much cooler. Like up till that point in the book, you haven't seen them on the same page at all because they've been in different locations. I'm trying to remember um, in that book, is that, uh, cause we, we have that in the background here in my, in my shelves. And I'm trying to remember, is that, does it cut to a big spread for that too? It does, yeah. The, the like big, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, they'd never ridden this way before. <laughs> like it just makes so much more sense. And is like visually like really, striking um and that's kind of the fun, that's really the fun of, of picture book um writing and someone else's illustrating yeah. Yeah. The, yeah it's um 
one of the one of the folks that I work with in the college atmosphere is a children's book writer, and uh, we had she had come up with an idea, and I sort of pitched some ideas for like how it could be done, et cetera. And she she handed off to our agent because we actually have the same agent. And we've talked about sort of like, well, if this book goes, maybe we could do it together, kind of situation. Um, <clears throat> and I know that there's things that probably like similar to what you're saying, like she would envision it to happen one way and I, I would try to like subvert that and do something that's like a little uh, quirkier or like what she might think would be a close up. And I'm like, no, that doesn't work in a close up here. Oh you, yeah. You know, yeah. For, for whatever reason, like there's, there's some technical things that get in the way that not every writer knows. And I imagine, you know, with you having insight into both worlds um, and, and participating in both worlds, it must be even more interesting to see when someone like breaks that um, breaks up that wall and does something that you definitely weren't expecting, even though you know how the you know how the uh, the, the the cookie was made. Yeah, uh, yeah. Made it, and exactly. someone all of a sudden says, "You know what? We're gonna put chips on the bottom of it, not <laughs> sprinkled on top." Or <laughs> right, like, what? right. I've right. Never yeah, that that's way. exactly it. And I think um, it it keeps me a fan of my work in a in an interesting way. Like I have a harder time being like really proud and excited of the books I've made by myself because I did the whole thing. So any flaw is my fault. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? It's <laughs> much harder. It's like or it's so much easier to just be a fan of my book when I'm like, oh, look at this book. Like Daniel illustrated it. It's so cool. <laughs> like, I know I did part of it too, but like, it's just much. It's and then easier. any problem with it, you can blame on him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what you just said. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it feels like yeah. a shared, like a shared thing. I actually, um, you know, speaking of Bob Shea, I, um, when I finished round and round, I didn't like it. I turned it in and I was like, it's just too close, you know? Um, and I asked him like, have you ever like not liked a book after you turned it in? And he was like, Carter, I've never liked one that I've turned in. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, his, his point was like, everyone, no one knows, like, you know what you were hoping to do in the time that you had. And, you know, like decisions that you had to leave out because, you know, deadlines yeah. or like just couldn't figure it out or whatever. But like no one else, no one else sees those things. Um, I mean, that that's, that's, really, that was that's a general me, thing on, yeah. on the art side, too, though, the like the not necessarily the imposter syndrome, but like I, I've talked about it on here many a times of <clears throat> what is what is finished and where do you stop? Because yeah. you, can, yeah. you can work something to death because you're the illustrator and you're going, well, that shine just isn't right on that <laughs> car. And you keep working right. it over and over. And in reality, those little kids are going to look at it and go, car, cool. Right. And move on. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, so was, like, that was really helpful. It's uh, I, I think that, yeah, that's, that's a universal language outside of, of art, outside of writing, like, you don't have to bend over backwards to make something perfect if you know who your audience is and their expectation level. I mean, yeah, I and and that doesn't at all mean like I know what you're saying, and you're not at all saying like it doesn't matter. They're just kids. Like yeah, here's a no. it's like not perfect. Like that's not what all, at all what you're saying. No, it's of course. Um, but it's a yeah. priority <laughs> and and perfectionism issue. Yeah, and I often up. say like one of the reasons I like you know hand cut paper and like collage is that like the whole like Bob Ross happy accidents thing is like it's it's mm -hmm. easier to like say that you're into <laughs> it's sort of like a protect <laughs> protective like state you know but then it's like oh no I actually like really do believe that like I find it I find the work more interesting that way <laughs> it gives you it gives you an out you like yeah you like, yeah exactly, exactly you like to be able to say the mistakes weren't yours I, that's what i learned in this whole conversation yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it's, it's the paper Blame it on daniel uh, yeah. exactly. um exactly. is there is there like have you had any concern about the collage side like i know that i i personally have this concern not necessarily um that i've had the opportunity to experience this 
but I worry that collage is not everybody's cup of tea. You mean like just kid just readers or like editors who might editors, art directors, do. even kids sometimes like is is collage a medium that uh, uh, you know like uh, and maybe this is again me being uh, or making assumptions, but like seeing details on a machine that's highly rendered sometimes is, you know, more palatable in my mind to a kid than someone like, I don't know if a kid would look at my textures and go, Oh, look at those beautiful Ooh. textures. <laughs> or look at that cut edge. Oh man, yeah. that's the best thing in the world. And yeah. Yet I here I am going like, that's the whole reason why I'm doing this is because I love those, that irregularity or those, those minutia uh, that probably are not significant to them. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think like, huh, that's interesting. But like, would you change because of no. that? Like, if, no. if you like doing it, isn't that? No, I just, I worry about that aspect of like, will people understand the beauty of, of or see the beauty in what I'm, what I see? And will they, you know, like, it's, it's the equivalent of, and, and forgive me, because I hope this doesn't come across the wrong way, but there's oftentimes, like in the world that I'm playing in with glue sticks and cut paper and texture that people might look at it and go, well, my kid could do that. Oh, then good. I hope your kid does do that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I worry that that can come across like, or that, that people might look at that and go like, well, that's, you know, since my kid can do that, I'm not gonna buy that one. I'm gonna buy this one that looks, you know, wildly different or hard to accomplish. And and again, I'm I'm putting a lot of words in people's mouths that aren't necessarily yeah. real. But I'm wondering right. if you have that same sort of concern about your own work that I, I, um, I am yeah. having I of my own. No, now you're just giving me a new like <laughs> unlocked a new fear, I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think so. I think like, I hope there's like a sense of joy that's still in the art even after, you know. Yeah, I'm probably like worked over, it to death. I'm probably overthinking it in a majority of my my comments there in the way that I sort of think about my work. I just one of the, one of the reasons that comes up is you don't see a ton of collage work in kids' lip. Oh. You see really? Stuff. Is that true? Okay. I just uh, right now it's a lot of digital stuff. Yeah. And I can yeah. think of like uh, uh, like like five or so collage people off the top of my head, but I can name you know a hundred people that are not. Oh, but I, I start see. to yeah, I start yeah, to yeah. just go like, am I missing something? Is there a reason why people don't gravitate to it more? And it could be literally just they don't like doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm, that's I'm like, true. Like I'm here because I like doing it, and it feels like yeah. com comfortable. But that's because I don't, I don't know how to work with gouache. <laughs> like, maybe I would use that if I did. Maybe probably, I, uh, not, probably not. It, Eureka, uh, not Eureka, uh, Holmes. Why can I not think of her first name? Oh, um, Aqua, Aqua, Aqua. Yeah, yeah, I know. I want to say Eureka because I always see the E yeah. and the U, and I'm like, yeah. that's what it is. Um, like her stuff is gorgeous with the textures and whatnot, but I know that like I look at that and I I see it, but I just yeah, it's always been a question of like, do other people see the same thing that I'm seeing? And they probably do, and I'm just being dumb. No, but, no, you're not being dumb. I think it's 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 uh, it's one of those things that like, how do you not be critical of yourself yeah <laughs> like it's just, i think it's something that like everyone has to do a, a bang up job to protect against and it's not always easy like, um, this has turned into a therapy session for me where, <laughs> like, talk me down please yeah uh, no keep doing it keep doing it <laughs> i you know my um i did a q a recently with my editor for like an email newsletter or something and one of the questions she asked me like really stumped me for a couple of days and it was um, similar to what you and I have been talking about, uh, about like, how do you know when um, 
a project to something that you want to illustrate versus like handing off to, to somebody else. And also like, how do you know when a project is worth being a book and not just like an idea, like, like an, one interesting idea. Yeah. Um, and I, I think so, like, I have some differing writing styles. Um, and, and this goes back to what we were talking about with like story time books versus like, I like that book, but I didn't know what any of the words meant. <laughs> right, like a lot of my writing, or some, the, the, my writing that's very like young, rhythmic, musical, like cadence driven, those I have an easier time seeing how I would illustrate. Um, partly because my work like is sort of the visual representation of like bouncy rhythmic yeah um, very young like writing for a very young person but I don't know that my style matches my more like narrative work or more literary um, writing and I think like when she asked me that I was like Oh, it's obvious. And then I was like, no, wait, what is it? <laughs> Actually, then I had to like think about it for, for a minute. But I don't want to be, I don't want to stop doing work that other people illustrate because I like writing that way. But I know that everything I write is not, you know, a good match for this visual. And I hope what that does is just like gives me more like room to grow and like avenues to try in this, in this industry. Um, you know, I mean, one of the one of the things you sort said of breath, early on too that I th one of the things you said early on that I think is probably like the the fundamental sentiment behind it all is the the type of story and it's it's I've said this in a couple of things like the story is king or the story is queen or the story is you know the ruler in this case with that idea that um, sometimes even though you might have a great story it's not always like the way that you would illustrate it is not necessarily the best um, or, or doesn't enhance the writing the way that someone else might enhance the writing. Yeah. And, yeah. and so like, I, you know, like the equivalent of like one of the things that you, uh, we mentioned that idea earlier of, of like writing yourself into a corner. I have ideas for books that I, I stop and I go like, I just don't have the, not necessarily the, the skill, but the patience yeah. to do some of what I want to write. Like, I don't want to write a book about cars because I just don't want to draw cars forever. Or uh -huh. I don't want to uh -huh. write a book that has, well, there's a million ants crawled up this hill. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, why did right. I do that? Right. No, it's so dumb. A million ants. Yeah, and it's it's some of that is going back to like the the animation background that I have. Oh, with, um, yeah, where someone would you know like I used to design a lot of characters, and I remember learning very early on, you do not draw plaid on a character, because then you have to draw <laughs> plaid on that character every single time. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> same same thing exactly. with like kid lip. I love plaid, but I'm gonna set up my characters so like if they do have plaid it is irregular and I don't have to go, well, there's five vertical stripes and four right. horizontal stripes on every situation. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So you um, are a teacher yeah. yes. at a high school? College. College, okay. And, it's, and you teach animation? No, no. I, I was just, you've been talking about your students and I know you, you said you're going back to school soon, but I like didn't quite piece together what Oh, no, what I, that meant for um, you. I teach uh, at a little art school called uh, Montserrat College of Art that's in Beverly, uh, Massachusetts. And okay. I, am, I teach in the illustration program primarily. When I started, I started teaching in both illustration and, um, and animation. But then some people left and I, I switched solely to the illustration department. Um, but I, I primarily teach, I mean, I teach a kid lit class or a, a, you know, a picture book class, but I primarily teach uh, a lot of seniors um, and teach like professional practice stuff and teach projects. So like their senior mm. thesis. Oh, I, cool. Okay. I help manage that. So like some kids do kid lit, which is 
fun, but then I have some students that want to do really like, you know, far out fine art sort of uh, approach just to what they do. Some students want to do character design. Some want to do uh, zines and anything under the sun. And so I, I'm sort of a generalist with what I teach. Um, I'm, I'm not That's like, cool. yeah. every once in a while I'll get a specific class, but um, it, it it is very, very fun to sort of go in on a daily basis and end up teaching something that uh, or or deal with students that are doing something wildly different than what I would do in my normal daily practice. Uh, oh, okay, because part of your work is to like uh, help them figure out yeah. the best way to do things for their for yes. them. Yes, I mean one of, one of the things that I always tell them is like the the students that I was talking about earlier that um, w where I was saying like you don't have to draw the sky every single time. Um, I was saying we were going through an idea that they had and I was pitching ideas that they could play around with. And at the end of it, anytime I do that, I always tell the student like, don't worry about using something that I pitched. This is, this oh, is yeah. I'm not gonna go and draw dragons for hours after this. I'm not gonna go and, you know, like the type of work that I'm talking to them about is not the thing I'm gonna turn around and do. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. it's uh, yeah. that, that side of management of it is really sort of interesting and fun on a regular basis as well. Have you, have you taught before? Um, like in, I have taught I, before. I mean, obviously the, the library, but right. like classroom, classroom. Right. Yeah. So I was never a classroom teacher. Um, but in both of my schools, kids come with their class to the library weekly. So I was, um, teaching. Yes. Yeah. Um, K to six. Um, I've also taught a lot of grownups, like the, the trade school that I went to, to learn how to do um, like After Effects, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I went back to and taught like color theory and layout and composition and like intro to Photoshop and intro to After Effects. Um, that, that was fun. Like those were like three days three eight hour days of like intro to photoshop and then like you're out <laughs> it's like real intense um i like doing that i like that a lot the um i imagine even especially even like teaching the the little ones there's such a huge difference between kindergarten and what was it sixth grade you said it was the highest yeah yeah there's a big difference yeah. <laughs> i mean just fundamentally how they learn is probably wildly different but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah was it, it was it something that you had training because it sounded like to me that you went to i mean you had the like education stuff but was it stuff that you had to like update and change because of uh i mean i guess maybe they cover that but but the, that idea of like you know, one hour of the day you're dealing with kids who are just learning how to read. Right. And then the next right. hour, all of a sudden you're dealing with kids who are like, you know, totally know exactly what's going on. And yeah, there's like a big shift when like a kindergarten class would walk out and like in come fifth graders. <laughs> it's yeah. quite, a, um, quite a shift. Um, yeah, you know, I, I really enjoyed, I was able to, um, particularly in the second school that I worked in, um, it was an independent school in Los Angeles and um, their like accreditation system was such that like, um, I don't remember how it worked. Like you would have like three action items to work on over like the next three years to like keep your accreditation. Yeah. And the year that I started, it was the, um, the headmasters last year, he was retiring and um, the librarian had left kind of in an emergency mode, like mid school year before. Um, and basically the library was just like kind of abandoned. Um, and so I interviewed and the headmaster was like, oh, I don't know, like I, maybe I'll just let, you know, the new head who comes in next year, like hire somebody. And I was like, no, like you can't do that. Like you have to have a librarian. So so he like gave me the job. And then the last place I went on this like school tour was the library itself. And I realized like, oh, okay, like this library needs a lot of support. It was basically like, like a 
tear down in a lot of ways. Like we over the, I spent five years there and I was pretty clear that I was going to be um, like transitional. And I was really hoping that I was able to um, design a library that someone could come in after me and like really design a great program. Yeah. Um, all of this to say, so like the, the great part about teaching in a library is that it's real fluid. Like you don't have um, like grades or report cards in the same way that that you do if you're a classroom teacher. And so like if something didn't work, like I would just like scrap that lesson or like try a new way or like from year to year. I mean, you know how it yep. is like books come out every single week. So like I could change what I was doing from like year to year. Like I rarely did the same you know, there's some like some things that you sort of do from year to year, but it's a little different than a classroom teacher who's like, okay, like now we're doing like double digit multiplication, <laughs> like yeah, is it yeah. November or whatever it is. Um, so I I really enjoyed the freedom of teaching of teaching like that. The uh, that's one of the things like when I hear about the um, the students that we have at school that are art ed students, like hearing about all the accreditation stuff they have to keep up on a regular yeah. basis and the, yeah. the state standards for some of the stuff right like, ugh, right it's complicated is, it does not sound like fun to me of any sort but i mean obviously like you have to do it and once you do it then you can you can have your fun in the classroom and really you know have a, a different experience with those kids but uh the collegiate teaching world as long as you get the competencies done you're good yeah uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, makes... how you do it is up to you and you don't have the oversight um which is uh the thing that i i would not look forward to um no, no. is there is are, are you full-time illustrating and writing now or are you do you have other yeah i know? mean i i have like odds and ends like day jobs because um i have to <laughs> yeah. but yeah like i don't i'm not teaching anymore no no i mean it's it's i uh, i know that there is a a a notion by some folks that like uh, i get this from students all the time in particular that like if you're not full-time then like well you're not making it but like clearly that's not true i mean i have a, a day job and uh it means that yeah. my is <laughs> variable and uh, right. i might right. have to work exactly. on weekends and things of the sort right. but um, right. i i always like to hear that I mean, obviously, if someone's can be full time, great. That's wonderful for them. And yeah. I don't want to disparage that. Yeah, but I exactly, always, exactly. I always like hearing that that folks, um, you know, or or I think it's beneficial for folks to hear that you don't have to be a full time illustrator or writer of the sort to somehow have a stake in the game. Right. Um, right. I think there's also like it's really. Um, I was talking with a friend of mine. About this this morning like the idea that your creative brain and your creative output is responsible for like oh, like surviving mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really intimidating right um and so and also probably like not all that great for creativity um so you know maybe like do i wish i was doing this from like sun up to sundown every day like i technically maybe because i more fun than like accounting or something but, yeah <laughs> um I, I don't know i i definitely don't think i'd want to do this in a full-time capacity because of the social outlet yeah yeah which is probably why we all get excited when you ask us to do something like this yeah. like, <laughs> like do you want to oh, talk to someone while you work worker yeah what yeah. i do <laughs> i mean seriously it's 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 one of those things where like i just don't know if if i could maintain a healthy uh, uh mindset if i didn't have some sort of social outlet. and i'm not saying that like i have to be the life of the party in all situations but <laughs> i definitely think that uh being able to ch chat with people being able to like what one of my i love talking with the students but i also think one of my favorite things during the day is to go down and just like talk to someone in their office just do that like classic lean on the doorway yeah. and go like hey, oh yeah on? like the water like, cooler yeah yeah essentially i don't even know do we have a water yeah i guess we do have a water cooler <laughs> uh, <laughs> i have to think about it um do you do you get out and like uh <laughs> sorry that sounds do you 
do you have friends? I mean, come on, seriously. <laughs> um, no, more so like, do you have outlets for getting out and talking to people um, in the art community in your area? Like if I'm, where, where are you again? You're in- Yeah, uh, I'm in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. And the yes. answer to that is definitely no. Okay. Um, definitely no. And, and certainly something that I have had in uh, like at other places. Um, I'm just going right now. Are you telling me Las Vegas isn't all about the arts? And the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, a robust kidlit environment? <laughs> it's not, it's not a robust kidlit environment. No. no. <laughs> Do they, wait, okay, this is going to sound really like pointed. Um, are, are you in Vegas proper or are you? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So answer me, riddle me this. Is there bookstores in Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are there are some bookstores. There's a great one called the Writer's Block. Okay. Which is a very clever name, I think. It's, um, not, not, it's not an adult bookstore, right? It's a <laughs> it's a <laughs> Correct. Oh yeah, okay, good. I, I, there's, there might be some of those as well. Who knows? <laughs> it's it's one of those things. Like I've been to Vegas once. And, That's probably uh, enough. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it was <laughs> it's one of those things. I don't remember seeing bookstores at the time, but I also wasn't on the lookout for. Them. Right, um, right, so, right. You see what you see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All I yeah. remember is people handing me cards as I walked down the street. And, yeah, you know, uh, like if you avoid the hoopla, there's. Yes, you get out. You get get out on the side streets, not on the strip. I'm right. sure it's probably absolutely lovely. Exactly. When uh, we saw, I saw someone online post a thing about like, what are the odds? Who else would ever have this happen to them? And it was someone who had a wedding, and uh, Tom Hanks was walking and took pictures with the wedding party. And then the only time I've been in Vegas that exact same thing happened to the group that I was with that my cousin was getting married and they, we were at the, what is it? The Wynn, uh -huh. the Wynn hotel um, and casino. Uh, and we accidentally stood in front of uh, his secret elevator to take oh. photos. And so we, there's photos there. of Tom Hanks with his son and my cousin. Uh, oh my goodness. Funny. Getting married. Um, and the marriage didn't last. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's Tom's still, fault. <laughs> yeah, it's Tom Hanks was, yeah, he showed up and then she fell head over heels for, for Tom <laughs> Hanks. And that was it. Um, do you, uh, are you a gambler? No, 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 <laughs> no. That's a bad idea. <laughs> you know, the, the one, one thing that if I were to go back there, and I know we did while we were there was go to antique shops. Oh, okay. Because of, all the like vintage fun uh like old vegas antiques that are around right i imagine uh i would like to go back and do that again at some point there you go there you so go. what what uh do you have uh online resources as far as like groups and things of the sort that you're part of or yeah i have a great writing group um and we i was in Los Angeles for a long time and we were meeting in person there. And of course, like everybody in the pandemic, we like, we went to zoom. Yeah. Um, and then we, we still do, we still meet on zoom, which is cool. It's cool because I've since moved to Las Vegas and so I can still participate. Um, I think like Los Angeles is so tricky anyway. Like I, I hope I'm not making this up. I think it's like <laughs> sometimes more convenient too, just to like be in Los Angeles, but not have to drive you know yes ages and ages for um not be there when they're meeting so, show up. so, yeah. Yeah. so uh, we meet pretty regularly and um that's been great that's been great. it's nice to it's i think it's important to find people that like whether or not you're at the same like stage in your career like we might not all be thinking about the same thing at the same time but yeah. um everyone is like really talented and takes it seriously. And um, it's been a great, a really great group. Why, out of curiosity, why Vegas? Um, space and money. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. not the heat, you don't want that. <laughs> no, man, yeah. oh my goodness. No. I, uh, 
I would not survive there one bit because of that. Yeah, it's not it's not that great. Actually, like these things I was trying to make earlier, like we have these like cool cacti I with like saw that. I pink love that. flowers. And yeah. I was like, I'm gonna try and make one, obviously not a very successful one, but um there's some like very cool like um wildlife here that we never saw in, in Los Angeles, that's for sure. I see uh I didn't even realize it, but Mike Petrick. Do you know Mike Petrick's work? I don't. Okay. Right. You gotta look him up. His stuff okay. is, is super fun. Uh he has a, a kids graphic novel series uh that I don't even know what number he's on now. Um I feel like it's like book number four at this point, but um uh he actually said before i even probably even asked the question about do you either of you have illustration or author groups that you socialize with um so is there an art scene that you like galleries or anything out your way uh, that you i mean it's so embarrassing but like no there probably there might be but i don't know about it yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to you have to start one if you want it to yeah be, there you go there you go yeah if you want it to be uh functioning I have I have so many students that want to move away out of the area that we're in purely because it's just expensive, and I, yeah. I I tell them that like you know you may not have an art scene and you might have to like start one, which is you know most of them probably have no idea the the how to do that, um, but I do know that like it's not an easy thing to do to just start up a art scene or a <laughs> gallery space or what have you. Right, um, like just make one. Yeah, just just find people. Um, but once you do, then all of a sudden, you know, you are in charge and you get to say what you talk about. Uh, right. <laughs> right, right. You're not oh relying gosh. on those other jerks to decide. Um, how often do you do you go to the conferences in general? Like, it, it's been a while. It's been a while. Okay, I know that they just, just they had one like an online one now in our area that I did not participate in uh and i don't know if i like i don't know how often i'll get out to those if it's not in person just because it's a online doesn't feel as exciting to me yeah it does. doesn't does it do you when you go to like do you get out to just events like that not necessarily the 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 kidlet world but do you get out to like um festivals and those kinds of things periodically no. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm like really I'm like, like I'm this asking guy this is like the most boring. Yeah. Are you having fun in your life? No. Pretty much no. <laughs> Are you okay? You need to uh, yeah. blink if you're all right. That's um, funny. You know, I I will say, I will say like I was kind of worried about coming to hang out with you today cuz this is actually the first time I've touched any kind of art supplies since April. That's a long time. That's that a really a long time. time. Um, and the work I was doing in April was not really for fun. It was for a dummy. I mean, it was kind of, it was fun until it wasn't, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I ended up like, like, it was so not fun that I was like, can we just submit this as text and have somebody else deal with it? Because I can't, I can't deal with these pictures. Um, and then prior to that, I'm sure it was like, you know, turn it like very very early in the year so i'm like so i'm like rusty with both like what am i what do i do i don't know like where's my where like this morning i had to like hunt down the glue sticks like where am i what, what am i even doing um i so i yeah i'm feeling rusty and like this has been really really fun but like the what my parents were pretty sick for a while and so like so much of like oh. everything that you're saying like sounds so fun and i'm like oh people do that <laughs> i don't remember <laughs> you gotta yeah we gotta get yeah um i'm trying to think if there's like i mean again when i think of vegas and i think of like the gallery scene and stuff like that i think of like shiny chrome uh <laughs> like uh 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 vegas <laughs> images yeah. like that's not necessarily the exact th same thing you want but uh i know that like i it's it's a classic issue for illustrators in general of just like you get stuck inside in your studio for a long time or you get stuck on a project I, one of the things you said there that i think is great is 
and I, I feel like I need to use it from now on is that it's fun until it isn't, uh, <laughs> which is like, like quintessentially of what it's like working in Kidlit yeah, for me. Yeah, that it's just, it is like the start of the project is always amazing and the end of the project always sucks. Yeah. And yep. you just have to like get used to it because that's the way it's going to be. Right. Um, right. I think that's kind of what, like, I mean, I, again, like with, when Bob said, like, I've never liked something I've turned in, it's like, it's just an acknowledgement that like, sometimes it's just, just work. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. And that's okay too, right? Yep. I have it's this uh... like, vellum, I feel like really wanted to make like a fishbowl through this, but now make my a... scale is like a lot of whack. To make a what? I wanted to like make this fish and then cut out like a big circle for a fish bowl and put it on top so he looks like he's in the water. I wonder if vellum is expensive, isn't it? It's probably not vellum. It's more like tracing right. paper. <laughs> I'm, not, that, I'm not a top of the line supplies kind of girl. I use, so whatever this is, is not expensive. I use tracing paper for all of my paperwork in this. Oh, do That's you? The, yeah, it's, 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 I like the transparency, yeah. Yeah. which is part of it, but, but also I think just the, the aspect of it um, being some somewhat cheaper yeah. than like vellum or things of the sort. Um, I, I, I really forget. like this um, this vellum. Like, if if you put these like quick sticks over top, it like it makes such a cool texture. I mean, it's a little wet right now, but it'll dry. Um, but then it like waves. It doesn't soak in, obviously. So it like weighs it all down and I like prepped all of this for a picture once and then it was just it like curls up into scrolls <laughs> it was like impossible <laughs> to use that sort of the um one of the one of the things that I've been trying to get back to in particular with with some of the like working with trace is just the idea of like the transparency and like where it shows through and that's that's that man I'm gonna massacre her name again uh, Holmes, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I need. Yes. To, I need to. I have the book I over think, here, and I just need to. Go I think it's Aqua. Aqua. Like, okay. Right. I'm not 100 percent sure how she pronounces. Um, but one of the things I loved about her work in general is just like being able to see through and the the transparency. And when I started doing this, I was doing it because I love that transparency, and I feel like I've lost that a little bit, and so. In some sense, I need to maybe like work in thinner layers of paint, or I need to reconsider material. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you paint on that? the tracing paper, and then uh, I'm like trying to look at what you're doing. Yes, yeah, no, no, no I I pre-paint the trace, and so I just I, I see I paint swatches like this here. So it's it's texture and then like transitions of color and then I try to find the right spot or the uh -huh. right uh, variable to be able to play with. And then like in this case, I didn't have enough of the color I wanted. So I had to glue some together and then I get a l fun little like, uh, you know, collage as aspect because you have to see where I glued it together because I literally yeah, just- Yeah, because of the little overlap. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. But that's I- cool. I know that there's other materials I want to try and introduce. But you're working from that sketch, but you're not like, you're, you're like cutting freehand. You're not yeah, yeah, creating yeah. like stencils for yourself. No. In fact, one of the, one of the folks that I saw work one time that I was like really impressed with, uh, Isabel Arsenault. Yeah, uh, we made this. a book together. You did? Yeah. Wait, which book? Um, it is called A Story is to Share. Oh, yeah. Like, Okay. Book biography of Ruth Krauss. Oh. Yes. Okay. I know the one. I didn't. I didn't even connect the dots. That's funny that I'm like that dumb. Um, I mean, speaking of, about like, I was such a huge fan of her long before we made a book together. So that that is something I really yeah. Love. I'm chasing chasing the high of like working with someone you're a fan of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get her to come on this, but she 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 is not. Um, she was not super excited about being in front of people. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's, she seems like just a quiet person in general. Uh, and so that, that was uh, maybe someday, someday. someday but um, exactly. one, of, one of the things that she did that I thought was really fascinating is she, um, she would paint the character. She would draw the character on one side of the page, put it on a light box, paint the character on the other side, 
and then go back and cut the back of it. And because she had painted, some of the lines wouldn't be correct. So if you go look, one of the ones that she showed that's my favorite thing that she's ever done is in this uh, uh, mouse with a house on its back. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, oh, yeah. There's a, there's a like bunny that's sitting at the table in that. And the way that the, the waist lines up uh, for the pants is like cut at a way, I don't even know if I could draw, like what, where's, where's like the, the, I'm trying to think of like, how would I describe this or draw this out? It's like if the character was sitting here and they had a pant leg, sort of, let's, let's do this. Here's a pant leg, knees, okay, okay. Uh -huh. et cetera. It was like the, the cut that she made went in too far. And so like it had this weird like shape and it was purely just because she had cut from the back, not looking at the image. Okay. And so that, like, okay. again, that, that like mistake or that irregular edge to me was like everything about that piece. And uh, that's uh, cool. yeah. I, I remember talking to her afterwards being like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I want, <laughs> I want to do, I want to do that in my work. Uh, and, you know, at some point, maybe I, I'll see if I can try that process. But it was, again, forcing her hand into sort of like a realm where she didn't have complete control over it. That was so exciting to me. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's neat. Who, who are you looking at artist-wise? Who are, who are your stars? Well, I made books with them already. So like, I don't... <laughs> Okay, who are the other stars? I'm just teasing. Um, gosh, good question. That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, this is exactly what happens when, like, as a librarian, someone would be like, I'm looking for a new book. What's good? And you, like, totally freeze because you can't think of any books you've ever read in your whole entire life. What? <laughs> that's, how that, that's how that question landed. Like, yeah. wait, do I know any? Oh, no. <laughs> um, um, and you just start naming people that have, have asked <laughs> at this point. <laughs> right. And then you just you sound cool because you're saying names that, like, people don't actually yeah. know. <laughs> Oh, just make a make person. a foreign name so people just like oh I don't know that person they must yeah, like, exactly. oh yeah so he was, I he was say, a rare I Swedish with, illustrator um, in the seventies exactly and, uh, <laughs> very nice. she wouldn't understand um, lately on Instagram though I've been really excited by Jennifer K Mann's like she's got this sketch thing going on where she's using like limited tools okay or yeah like it's like three things and we made we did make a book together she illustrated um <laughs> <laughs> she, she illustrated um, a chapter book series I wrote called Audrey L and Audrey W. Okay. Um, actually, and she, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, she was not on the radar of my editor and art director when I was like, hey, like, what do you think about this? So I, I can go back to that question with, with that one. Like, maybe I introduced them to her or her to them. Um, I, I like, so when I get on Instagram, I like, look at like the first like two things that are there and then like run away <laughs> and I think because I was like commenting on all of her posts because I'm like such a fan girl like she's usually at the top of mine so like she's doing this like challenge right now or just like um you know what do you what do you call those like yeah like yeah set art challenge thing. yeah yeah so like she's always at the top of my Instagram and I'm like always like just putting like heart eye emojis um that is my answer that is what i'm like really into right now like everything she's doing with her sketches is like so exciting to me uh, um is there is there someone like and this is going to be sort of pointed question for because of your situation is there someone that you look at that you go i don't know if my writing matches this person's aesthetic but at some point i want to write a book for this artist Ooh, oh, that's a good one. Huh. Oh, oh, that's a hard question. If there's a, uh, someone that I do, you, do you? I don't know. What do you? What do you have? Oh well, I, I I don't consider myself a writer to begin with. I consider myself an illustrator that happens to have written a couple of books. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, fair. But uh, I mean, there's. There's people that like I think do amazing work that I would love to collaborate with in some manner, which I think yeah. is maybe the like closer relationship that I would have. Um, 
I, I really what the big star for me right now that I think is always going to be on the plate is uh, Nomi Bola, who is oh okay, uh, who does really weird sort of uh, silly uh, stories, and then outside of that, um, like. Yeah, I would almost go the other way and say like are the writers that I that I would love to work with that I don't know if my artwork would pair with uh, and I, I know that like I'm trying to think if there's like someone that I would like off the top of my head where I'm like oh I, know, it's I hard, absolutely it's hard when you're like off the top of your head well, it's also, so mostly mostly the stuff that I like is kind of like silly and so it's it probably does fit with me. I'm trying to think if there's someone that I'm like, oh, that's a really serious book that uh, is, you know, out of my, my wheelhouse that I would go towards. Um, my wife would probably know them more than I would, honestly, because she's uh, she's she's got a better memory for names and and things of the sort. Um, hmm. I don't know. That's a I stumped myself. That's, a hard, that's not good. It's a hard one. Is there is there publishers that you're that you're like dying to work with? Ooh, another good question. Um, you know, I, I've always really been impressed with the like production of Candlewick's books. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of um, for better or for worse, like into like paper quality <laughs> and like just really thoughtful details and I, I think they make really beautiful books so I don't, that is definitely paper quality is huge yeah I'm uh it's uh that's why I like flying eye books that's why I like no brow uh, yeah yeah like their paper quality when you get it and you're just like oh this is like this isn't cheap paper of any sort uh it makes a huge difference um yeah Candlewick's like just down the road from us oh, or somewhat yeah, yeah. It's in... like enchanted lion also mm -hmm. i think makes really like interesting books and and ones that are maybe not um like typical typical format typical length um i like that i like that i was i was talking with a uh, a friend who's an agent uh at one point and i said that you know i'd like to work with some of those like the ones we're talking about enchanted lion no brow uh uh flying eye all those that sort of almost, I, I take them as a little bit more on the artsy side of, yeah, of yeah. sort of production and things of the sort. They're willing to try some odds and ends. Um, but the downside that he said is they just don't pay anything. Mm. And like, yeah. as much as I, I want to put, like as much as I want to be like, yeah, I don't care about pay. Like, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I need, uh, I mean, it's I need to you know. make some money. You gotta buy <laughs> tracing paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, the amount of tracing paper and glue sticks I go through is so ridiculous. Is there is there a supply that you really would put money into at this point? Where like you know I mentioned, yeah. like we talked about glue sticks, and you, you know said what that it you is? Like it's sort of... Photoshop. It's Photoshop and like Adobe's dumb subscription model. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like the most ex nothing physical. I'm not precious about that at all, but. Yeah, it's always the biggest expense, I think. You got to teach. Yeah. Uh, I get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna rub it in your face right now. Oh, because you have a discount. Oh. Not even a discount. I get the whole Adobe suite for free. What? <laughs> I get everything Adobe makes for free. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Holy moly. Okay. okay. It's it's a specific. Well, if you ever need to hire first. a colleague. Yeah. <laughs> I know, like the cost, you're like, I'll go back and get my degree in whatever you need, I'll, I'll, just for the cost of the Adobe products. <laughs> right. um, well, it's right. funny because I don't even use, I mean, it, we, we have it for the school. So every student that comes to the school, there is no excuse of like, I don't have that program. Um, uh, but it, there's a certain level that's just like, oh, you want to get the design stuff, great. But then there's the next level up, which is you get everything. And yeah. okay. then it wow. means that, you know, any student doesn't have to pay for that that product yeah for those classes but they the teachers get it so i haven't uh and hopefully this doesn't like somehow get to adobe and they go wait a second but <laughs> i haven't had to pay for adobe products in years uh, and probably oh, have saved a fortune because you of that definitely uh, have you <laughs> yeah definitely. i think it was like right as they switched <laughs> to the to the subscription model is when i was able to bow out yeah the, and, the subscription uh, model that that did it 
is that is there um uh, is it just photoshop to use now or are you still using some of the like the media i i mostly just use photoshop and after effects wait after effects for for oh video stuff without... just for like uh, separate projects or like oh, okay. trailers or that sort of thing um no not for book not for trailers books, for but... your own, own stuff or trailers yeah. for other things yeah i've done a couple for my own stuff um yeah, I, I enjoy that. Circle under Barry and some of these are snails were like particularly well suited for. Um, yeah, I can see that. For that, I, I like hired, a, um, like I wrote the script and um, hired a kid to do the voiceover from Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> and um, two different ones actually, but one of them, was, her name was McKenna. And I mean, I did all the coordinating with like her dad. I, I, and I trust trusting that he actually was giving her the money. <laughs> um, but she said that she was saving up money to go to Disney World. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. So, yeah, that was cool. The, uh, yeah, I, I, there was a while back where I was like, I was trying to do trailers or things for all of my books, but I've just, I don't know. Some of them are suited, like what you're talking about, the ones that you have, like, those are definitely suited for some sort of fun trailer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't but, do it for everything necessarily. Um, yeah, but that really was a good match. Like who was it last week? Not last week. It was uh, a couple weeks ago. I had on, um, who, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, we did the lion girl that's coming out. Um, oh man, that's bad. I'm drawing a blank. My brain is mush apparently. Um, <laughs> but uh they just had a little trailer come out for the for the book and i was like oh yeah i forgot about trailers i forgot that's a thing and so yeah i mean probably not like a necessary thing but with my like background and skill set if it makes sense yeah like i want to do that after effects, i want to do that no, i think that's the the problem for me is i'm not familiar with after effects to be able to know how to do some of the things i'd want to do yeah like yeah, get you get like get yourself just in, in trouble and not know how to get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's it's the like having to deal with something that is a you know a two D flat image that doesn't ha isn't broken apart, right. and then have to somehow make it look like it's wiggling. Like if if you told me to do it in something like uh, Flash or I guess what's now Adobe Animate, I would have a method to do it, but it would not be uh, efficient in any way compared to what After Effects can do. Right, right. Like there's always a way to accomplish it, but I think. Yeah. That, and there's some, so yeah. I don't know Premiere at all. And there have been times that like, I try to edit like audio and After Effects, which is terrible for audio, but like you can like, you know, try to force it and get it, get it good enough, but it's not definitely not meant for that. But that's why you got to get a, a teaching job and then you can have audition. There you go. Audition, and it's specifically for audio um <laughs> if you ever yeah if you ever want to teach you want to get out of vegas um no um is there is there a skill like an art skill or what have you that you feel like you how do i how do i put this that you feel like you need to pick up like is is something that you think would be beneficial for you Ooh. um I would like to be a little more intentional with um, spending time on making kids. I'm like so much more comfortable at like things, <laughs> right? Okay. There's a thing. <laughs> I like, there's a thing. I, I like, I really like, like, this is really charming to me. Um, but I would like to spend a little more time like developing my, like, what it, what is the, what is like my, how do I adapt my style in a way that feels like really tr like true? Um, do you take classes of any sort at all? No, I don't. I don't. I should. Uh, well, it's, it's, I keep, and I, I haven't done it myself, but my wife has been saying that I need to do it. And I agree with her that I need to take more writing classes mm, to get my yeah, writing okay, okay. up to speed. Yeah, like it's it's so interesting because like I would say that to writers, like writers that I work with that are, you know, newer or sort of developing what their you know style and voice is, but like um, we have less. It's it's like harder 
better to be the teacher for your own self, I guess. Is the, yes. It's easier <laughs> to like give that advice than <laughs> this is, uh, uh, take it. One of those, yeah, it's one of those things where like, I just, I need to, I think I'm good, but I know just like, I know that just because I had a couple of books doesn't mean that I am uh, an expert. Yeah. And especially yeah, the type true. of work that I want to do now is very different than the work that I was doing then. Yep. So, yeah. You know, yeah. I need to, I need to wrap my head around some, some different techniques and mainly, honestly, one of the things I need is the, and maybe you can, maybe you can help me with this right now is just the, how do you find time to sit down and write and, how do you like my i guess my, my challenge is not just time but also yeah. like um, i don't i don't <laughs> <laughs> like i'm definitely i'm not someone that has like a real solid like writing rhythm. or like yeah. art rhythm yeah like i kind of do it when i can um and i try to like i sort of keep a list of like what are the active projects like that I'm keeping top of mind so that I can ideally like slip into it quicker, yeah. you know, with more ease. But, um, you know, I'm not one of those like write every day and like first I, you know, swim 40 <laughs> laps in the Atlantic or I guess you can't swim a lap in the ocean, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and then I have my like vodka with breakfast. Like, you know, like those <laughs> books that describe all the like people's creative processes. <laughs> I like, I'm not, I'm I like your that. version of the creative process. <laughs> you swim in the Atlantic and then have vodka for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, that's like so far from like my actual life. <laughs> what an and, interesting and, hole that yeah. you're in. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, I don't know. But I also feel like if I put too much pressure on myself, like it, nothing good like gets squeezed out, you know? But I, I'm... Um, but do you, do you have a... Me you must have some method, not necessarily a... a, a time frame thing but you must have some method in the sense of like well if i put uh you know like if i jot down ideas first then it makes it easier for me to go back and or or what what my uh hmm. friend does is like you just have to write a certain amount of words a day kind of thing they don't have to be good but you just right. got to get out and then you can edit and yeah, I, i'm wondering like do you have any methods like that that you know have worked for you no, I'm like I do not <laughs> I don't good. I don't I think like every you know it's it's a good question and I and I get it a lot you know in interviews or like um like blog posts or podcast interviews um but every project has had such a different origin story like I don't have a real like, yeah now I'm doing this part and now I'm doing that part. And part of that is because as a writer, I've jumped around in age categories. And so the sort of limits and freedoms are different. Um, but also like sometimes I'm writing only and sometimes I'm writing and drawing pictures. Like nothing has ever really been the same from time to time. Yeah. Um, consistency isn't yeah. So, there. Yeah. The only consistency is like you just show up and do what that project requires. <laughs> And how do you do that? Hopefully, and hopefully do it well, because I, I don't actually know. Um, this has been so fun. I have to run, but I'm like, I got distracted watching your um, poodle. I'm like, I haven't been making anything because like, look at that. I'm, I'm getting there. It's, it's, I don't even know if it's on screen. Right your, now. Um, um, so, but, so, like your scale that you work at is like so much bigger than I would have assumed it was like just looking at like your finals on your website or something. Oh, it's purely just because I can't cut small shapes. Because you've got those giant quilting shapes. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a skill level issue. And so I, I just go small. Um, but um, this has been super duper fun. I'm, I'm really glad that we have the opportunity to sort of connect and chat here. And um, I know that uh, I asked you lots of provocative questions that you weren't ready for no I was, uh, it was so it was so fun it did it felt like it did it felt like our water cooler moment <laughs> yeah no this is this the here i do what, like this fish that i made though I, that's look, a good fish. I, I know you said you didn't like that cactus but i like that do cactus you, okay the cactus wasn't terrible i like you know what i like the, is that still there i'm, I'm trying to see yeah if, uh, yeah hold on there's
uh, I have a delay on my feed, so I don't I don't get to always see. You know what I like about it? Yeah, what I like about it is the sharp edges on it. So like, like the the flat edges, yeah, and like the sharp corners. Because when I think of when I think of cactus, most of the time I think like, you know, sort of a rounded cylinder. And oh, yeah. I really love the like, especially these are, because yeah, these are interesting. <clears throat> they're like really, they're like I don't know what kind of cactus they are, but they're like flat. They look like big pancakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know the <laughs> they're ones, not like I, like a round cylinder. I know. I know the ones you're called. talking I about. Like this. Like, I would probably fix this. The, the reason why I like it in particular is just like the the cactuses are, are sharp and it is not technically sharp in the sense that it is a flat 2D image, but you've given a sharp edge. Oh, those. I see. Yeah, I, I see what you and mean. So, yeah. Like to me, that's the like, it, it indicates a sharpness without necessarily having to have really finite needles all right. over it or, or right. whatever those thorns or what are those called? Yeah, and like I, re I, don't, I don't know, pointy okay. bits that hurt. <laughs> like I, I really like these, those, these quick sticks, but what I wish they had was a more of like a crayon thickness. Like these are just like glue stick. Um, have you like used size? Have you used Posca marker though? I do. Yeah, they're like a little too runny for me. Okay. Like I, I, yeah. And then these are the thin ones. I think they're called thin sticks or thin quick sticks, but they're still pretty like thick, thick. and you can yeah. kind of like carve down like an edge, but then you can't see like what the mark is that you're laying down because you have to like hold your hand awkwardly to do it. I wish there was like one more size down. I like, then I think like these little spikes would have been like pointier. I like the like, I want fact that that is the, the thin version. Like I know, I know. <laughs> I know, it's, How like, it's thick is darn the thick kids one? and their like motor coordination control. Like <laughs> I want like kid stuff. <laughs> the thick ones are like <laughs> four inch diameter. You have yeah. to like grip them with both hands. Exactly, uh... <laughs> exactly. And then like the glutes, like these are kind of similar. Oh, I think I just said this. These are pretty similar in scale. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to keep my eye out on your feed for your final illustration. It, it'll get up there. It may not okay. be, it may, it may be like a week or so, but it will get up there. And I, I want to see if you get a chance to sort of post some of the things too. I definitely want to see. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. Thanks for, for having me really the opportunity to like, um, you know, dive back in after many months felt less <laughs> scary. After a while, <laughs> you did fabulous. You did well, thanks fabulous. for having me. I I might like watch, catch up watching in a bit if you're gonna hang around for a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on until probably about six. So, uh, yeah, feel free to to tune in and and chime in and yell at me the whole time. Okay. Like, I, will one, I wouldn't cut it that way. That's for yeah. helping. She's great. Yeah, she. What is what? What is her name, by the way? I just know her as oh, Mrs. Mrs. Hoppy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she is uh, Lauren. Lauren, yeah. okay. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> That's good Let's see if she says hi back. Oh, oh. Wait, we're waiting for it. Mm. She's upstairs watching. Sure. <laughs> she didn't say. She didn't say hi back. There Maybe she she's... is. There she is. Oh wait. There she is. Oh, I know why she isn't saying hi back. She's actually not here right now. She's. Oh, there's the. <laughs> She is up there. She's got to go pick up her son from uh, uh from camp. I guess I am seeing the comment. Oh, she did say hi. Yeah, the, yeah. You, you said you had a delay. I thought. Before mm -hmm. you um, she she, she don't pay attention at all. And I'll, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> yes, this has been wonderful, and we will we will definitely catch up. And at some point, I will uh, hunt you down, and we will meet in person. Uh, one way or another perfect okay thank you so much i'll talk to you soon all right bye, bye. i realize hunting someone down is probably not the best way to state that i will hunt you down uh but we know what i meant we knew what i meant um we did right <laughs> we didn't know what i meant um Sorry, I thought you already left for uh, for camp there for a second. So you're still here. I know. I still love you.
uh so folks uh as we whoa i just went blurry maybe i'll do a part two should i do a part two lauren because i'm blurry okay so folks who are watching right now i'm going to come back on in a second i'm going to load up a part one uh on the instagram and then i will restart and we'll do a part two so give it one second you can hop back on and for now i'll be back in a minute oh live i'm back i'm back i'm back everybody Woo-hoo! Woo! I got an echo. Hold on. I got sound, Lauren. You can go, 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 go. Bye. Okay, everybody. Sorry about that. I, uh, if anybody was tuned into part two, which was very little, um, I was having sound issues. I don't know what was going on. So, uh, I'm going to put ask me anything in these comments and you can... Type away, one, two, three, four. Ooh, four exclamation points. That's uh, living large there. Uh, so for those that don't or weren't here for part one, uh, I'm working on this little doodle of uh, some poodles. A doodle of poodle. Uh, and the poodle is, um, uh, 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 well, there's a little skinny poodle coming into the gym. Gym? For the first time. Uh uh, okay, yes, I don't know, I don't know what that was, I shut down Instagram altogether to try to get, um, to get it to a point where it, it came back, so, I think we're good, I think we're good, if we're not, we'll figure it out, we're in this together, we're in it to win it, I'm trying to figure out what color I want to make the barbells in this thing, and should I... First of all, I need to make a different shoulder for this guy so it feels a little like a, a he's got a bulkier colored shoulder there. I think it needs it. Um, but yeah, I got to figure out what color I want to make these uh, barbells and dumbbells and weights and stuff. Because originally I was going to do them in black, but then I realized, no, I'm doing black biker shorts on all these weightlifters. And then if I do black for them, then it's just this another chunk of black. And I, to me, that's too much. And so what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to, ooh, I will save that a little bit and I'll use it in a different way. There we go. And I will use this to... Make this ear here. Well, let's see. Can I cut that ear off? I hope I can. So I can peel it up. Without peeling too much of the board. That's what I don't want to do. There we go. Aha! I got it. Okay. I do have to glue down a little bit here. Um. Cynthia Illustrart, start, start. I know it's illustration and art mixed together. Illustrart, Illus, Illus. Um, thank you for signing up for the course. Uh, I hope that you enjoy it. You'll hear some some snippets and things that are uh, exclusives, exclusives to that um, to that format. Uh, some stuff I've talked about on here, but very little, and you will uh, hopefully have some some fun in there but uh and then when you comment and stuff i i get to see it uh i need to hop back on there and like respond to people which i haven't done in a while but at some point um but thank you for signing up for it i appreciate it i don't appreciate it uh i need more of that white what was that white that i was using is it this oh yes that's part of it i need too. Uh, oh, you're enjoying the course. Right? You're already taking it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. That was filmed a while back. I was so young back then. So naive. I'm trying to think. That was like two years ago that that was filmed. It was... Uh, it took a long time before it came out. Uh, because of weird issues at Domestica that they, uh, I don't even remember how it 
ended up that it took so long, but I know that there were issues that were unrelated to anything that I could control or they could control. So, um, but it came out and now people can take that course and they can hopefully get smarter and learn stuff. But uh, if you have, Cynthia, if you have any questions that you want to ask or things that are sort of tangentially related to that, that don't give away, not giving out free content, you know what I mean, people? But if there's something that you're like, oh, I wish I could ask this, uh, go ahead and ask away and I'll try to answer. Let's see, uh, I'm trying to figure out if I get this in here and then go. Right. I cut out little dog fingers, whatever dog fingers are. Don't ask me. I'm not a dog finger expert. Like that, and now I'm going to curve this just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Ooh, those are some clunky dog fingers. I don't like those. I looked at them on the other side. Round out because he's gonna have his hands wrapped around a bar, anyways. Dog fingers, dog fingers. That sounds like a cool band name. Oh yeah, I'm going out to see Dog Fingers tonight. Oh, my friend's my friend is uh, the cousin of that bass player from Dog Fingers. Uh, trying to think what else makes it sound like a man. I was out at the bar, and then uh, the the bassist from Dog Fingers came in, and he got everybody around, and then he sang karaoke. And he's he's just as good a singer as the lead singer. Oh, Dog Finger. I remember them when they used to be called Cat Toes. That was back before uh, <laughs> Martin Morrison. Uh, That's back before uh, they, they had the keyboardist come in. Have you ever have you ever heard those bootleg uh, Dog Finger albums from? from uh, when they were on tour with uh, um, who they'd be on tour with uh, Jesus and Mary Chain I'm trying to think of like what would be a weird pull that's the one I got when they were uh, when they were on tour with Frente <laughs> or when they were on tour no, like, it's got to be something that's a little bit more like uh, dog finger doesn't sound like it's. It sounds like it's more like a, a weird like, um, not necessarily punk, but like, like bad finger, and that kind of thing. So, uh, what would they be on tour with? Who's, who would be that? Uh, they were on. Dog finger was on tour with uh, uh, Jawbreaker. Can I give a tip on how to make a composition uh, on spree? On spreads? I'm not sure what you're trying to say there. Composition on... I just need that last word. <laughs> spreads in brief. Somehow it's a mixture, spree. But I can. I'd be happy to. I just need to know what I'm actually saying. I'll get out a, a spread. Okay. So, this is my, my notation pad. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw out a spread. All right, let's say I have a spread. Here's my gutter. A couple of things to note. Your gutter, you want to give probably about a half inch around that gutter where stuff doesn't go into it. So things like type, things that are important, that are um, images that are, are 
challenging. One of the things that is really hard in a spread <clears throat> is if you have something that does like it. Essentially, we have page. Well, let's not even do that. Let's let's say the real numbers. Let's say this is page. Uh, uh, I have to think. Seven. So let's say this is page six. There we go. And this is page seven. Odds are always on the right. Even on the left. Let's say that you have something that needs to expand that that sort of gap. Now it's easy enough if it's just like it's a big landscape and we need to put like a little house on it or something of the sort. We can just have that run across and we have the house that's over here. Where it becomes a challenge is if you have something that is going to fall in that gutter area. You want to think about like how to effectively get the points of interest. So if I come in, in fact I'll draw with a different color too. So I can do that. I can do that. So if I if I draw in my rule of thirds on each page, right, I want to keep in mind that I want to get something that comes out at least as far as one of these two points out from the gutter. So on either side. So if I have something like, let's say it's an a alligator that his jaw is coming all the way across, and I want to do something like this, I want to make sure that I at least get the nose to break out far enough that it crosses over. Because otherwise I run the risk of like, I stunt it basically by having it too close to this gutter. And so if it starts to fall in, even though this is past that half inch point, I wanna make sure that I'm careful of that. So what I start to do is I look at a spread and I say, okay, let me again put in my gutter here of some sort. And I start to say, um, Oh, uh, Sammy, uh, Samir, um, yes, I did. I need to, um, I have not seen the person. I was going to, I was going to try to talk to him in person just because it will make it a whole lot easier, uh, to relay and sort of see if they have interest first. And if they do, then I was going to pass along your stuff, um, and, and sort of pass along the name. But I, I, right now it's a matter of, I just need to run into the person. I'm going to see them next week and I will relay all of that information. Um, so when I'm working on something like this, and I want to I want to think about composition. One of the things I want to think about again is I'm exiting off that bottom right. I'm sort of entering from that top left, um, and so there is some sense of movement that needs to go in this flow, right? I don't necessarily want to ignore these other little pockets, but I want to think about sort of where my type is going to go, and those are easy spots to put type or in these little like notches that are here. Um, if I want to, I can also consider that this could flow in a different manner. Let me, let me get my little black marker out here again and do this. Um, if I'm working with that spread, I might also consider the idea of sort of a, a bounce. Um, one of the things I, I, I like to do is like if I break it up into four quadrants, I want to start by having... Uh, I want to stay away from text being too much down in like the bottom right hand corner. I'd rather have like text here, text here, same thing up here, same thing down here. And so I'm going to have some sort of image, whatever that image is, it's going to lead down into the corner here, bounce up, lead down and out. It really depends on sort of like what you have um, uh, in the in the sense of... Um, uh, Samir, yeah, no, no, worry. I will, I will get to it. It's a matter of, I just, I, I think it's better to have the conversation in person with them just to say, Hey, are you even available rather than trying to have people hunt them down? Um, in a, in a case like this, what sometimes I will do is I will have like a character or something that leads in. So let's say it's a, let's say it is a landscape. Let's say I'm playing with the landscape on this and I want to do something like a horizon line. Um, I will probably lean that horizon line a little bit down to the right, just so again, it has that like, uh, what they call a Dutch angle. A Dutch angle is if I have a screen, the horizon line tilts. And so let's say here's my tree, here's my house. That tilt can add uh, impact or, or excitement to it. And so just by having a slight tilt on that horizon line is automatically gonna make the eye sort of lean down to the right. Then what I might consider doing is in order to get my eye over to something like let's say a house over here is I might consider like, okay, what if I put a chimney in, right? I'm gonna bring those clouds, the, the chimney, I'm gonna bring that smoke all the way to that top edge. So everything is sort of leaning down towards that. 
in order to counter that or to create some sort of stall somewhere around the house, like my eye is gonna automatically, let's do this with black again. My eye is automatically gonna move this direction. What I need to do is consider, is there a way to prevent the eye from going off the page too fast? And that's where I'm gonna look at the idea of this arrow is moving this direction. I need to create something that sort of is a barrier. So something that slices it somewhere in here. And so what I might look at is like, what if there's the start of a forest here or something of the sort? Let's say this is the forest. And there's some little trees and things over here. But that idea of like a wall or a barrier that I run into stops me just for a second, adds a little sort of, so I've got black in this, I gotta do that. Adds a bit of a, um, uh, a stop point. You know, whether you wanna go all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom, I don't know, because sometimes you might want to make it so it has to go up and around compositionally. But that idea of like, we're, again, working from that top left, bottom right, are your key factors. Another way to deal with composition that I mentioned on, I think last week, is go and find your favorite artist. So if I go take something like, um, I'm trying to think if there's like, there, I'll even use this book. This is a, a Carter Higgins book that Emily Hughes illustrated. Right? I'm, not, I'm gonna pull from this. I'm not gonna do the exact same thing, but let's say, okay, we'll use this spread. That idea of we have the spread here, we have something that is a structure that comes up this way, comes down here, bounces back up, and has something of importance there, right? In no way is that a copy of what's here. That is just a structurally that's how this thing is built. Now I might go and say, oh, let's take that and let's build a composition off of that or an image off of that. So if I wanted to do something like, uh, let's say something happening, uh, an escape at a zoo, right? I might look at that idea of maybe this here is the sign that says zoo, right? Um, that's been knocked over and bent and broken, whatever it may be. Um, I might have some other things like some fencing that comes up this way, that sort of breaks that. I might look at this thing that's coming up over here. What if this is a searchlight from helicopters that are flying overhead and they're all trying to sort of see if there's a uh, character. So I might put like, uh, you know, here is a chimpanzee that's caught in the spotlight here. Um, I, I'm gonna look at, are there ways to sort of like transition object A, B, you know, let's say this is C, that's a D. Um, I know it's A, C, B, D, but um, is there a way to transition those lines, those what I call through lines, things that are consistent with the image like if I did this and I had a zoo and I had or a sign from a zoo that's been broken down and I have something like an elephant stomping off this way back here let's give him a little bit more of a there's his tail he's stomping off this way right and I have a chimpanzee here that's that's holding you know some cotton candy from a cotton candy machine and this is some other like fencing that's been broken um I'm effectively using that same composition, but it's a totally different idea. Um, I don't think anybody would look at this and go like, oh, you know what, that's the exact same thing, because I don't have those branches doing the exact same twists and turns. I'm not tracing of any sort. Um, I could look at that and say, okay, let's take that escape from a zoo, and I'm just gonna grab another spread, just for the sake of argument. Um, do you always try to make the focal point come on the second page of the spread? Not necessarily, but you wanna have something that's interesting on both in both pages um so let's say again here's here's another variable so in this case what i might do is something like what if these are giraffe legs that are coming down here let's i'm gonna put spots on them just so we know that's what's going on here instead of trees they're giraffe legs what if this sitting here in this sort of space is the security guard and now he's come up and he's got a spotlight that's leading that direction um you know in this case there's this thing that's going through that could be just 
the the edge of a walkway that's in there. But again, I'm using the same basic like location, but not the exact same thing. And so what I do is I get something like this and then I go, oh, you know what? I don't want to get that close. So let me do a version of it. And what if I have one of those giraffe legs coming across the gutter and another one that's sort of sticking down further. And so it's not an exact copy of any sort. And what if the, the security guard is, you know, bigger in this case, and he takes up the entirety of that edge. Let's assume this is it. Um, here, like, is it the same thing that we had before? No, I've, I've removed enough out of it. Um, but that, again, that idea of like pre-existing, moving across the page, those are the things you want to do. Um, when you're doing something that's like a, a, a single page or a, uh, a vignette, that's a different story. Um, it still should have some of those elements, but maybe in a little bit more condensed sort of range. Let's put it that way. So, I don't know. I don't know if that was helpful, but hopefully it was. Uh, what was I was going to do? I was going to do eyes on this guy. I'm going to give him... I don't like that shape. I'm going to try to get a better shape here. Are there other questions that people have that I can help answer? I also don't know why I said question that way. Are there other questions that people have that I can help answer? Cynthia, not a problem. And I talk a little bit about sort of like composing and whatnot in that domestic of course, but it's it's um, more specifically about sort of that project. But there's there's some methods to the madness that will will help everybody, I think, in general. Let's see. Let me get this here. Oh, I need to make that guy. Man, I have a lot to do on this. I sure hope... Oh, it's already five? Oh, shoot. Okay, let me get back to this. I didn't realize it was so... This thing might be a late night doing this one. Let's see. Um, let's see, how many colors are you using to mix with? Do you use a limited palette or just go with the flow? Uh, I am using a limited palette. And so here, I'll show you in just a second. Let me figure out, oh, I cut it the wrong way. I guess I can do this. Ha ha. Let's get it maybe a little bit more pronounced. And I can probably get closer to that. I don't like that. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. Um, colors. Today I have... This is my palette for the day. Let's see. It's actually... It's it's a pretty robust palette for me. Um, it's mainly purples, reds, and oranges. And then a little bit of yellow and a little bit of this... Uh, what do they call this? Light blue permanent. Um... Normally, I pick out a palette, so I don't have, like, greens. I don't have... Uh, the closest I get to a pure red is this guy, which is the fluorescent red. Um, I don't really... This is the only blue that I have, so I'm not going into, like, dark blues or anything of the sort. Um, anytime I want to make a dark blue, it's going to have to have a little bit of something else in it, which will tint it a little bit grayish. So, like, I have this as a color, and I was going to introduce this, and um, I wonder if I can... do it here like as some of the weights this is going to be how i was going to do some of the weights is with this and so um so it feels a little bit more like metallic-y not metallica metallic um but i do pick out a palette ahead of time so none of these palettes are um sort of fixed after the fact i always pick out the palette first and then i figure out what i'm going to do with it and so, like, why did I choose to do blue dogs? Well, because that's... Or not blue dogs. Uh, reddish, pinkish dogs. Well, that's because that's the color that I had in front of me. Um, not any sort of, like... Like, dogs aren't red or purple. Um, they're, they're a different palette altogether. And so I, I really take the time to sort of play around with color. And as long as I'm consistent in my inconsistency, then those colors should work. 
And so as an example, um, because I am working with something that has uh, red dogs, well, there's no reason why the walls have to be, you know, a specific color. Or if I wanted to make um, uh, a tree, it doesn't have to be green. It could actually be a yellow tree. There's all sorts of ways to play around with sort of the color of the piece, depending on um, the the inconsistency. Let's put it that way. Uh, how many colors do you use? You mix in? Do you use limited colors? Oh, that's uh, that was that question. And then, do you make a sketch for this current spread before, or do you just experiment and see where it takes you? Uh, so again, I did make a sketch for this one. This one is the sketch that I'm working with, um, but. It is, some of it is just trying to figure it out as I go along. There's not a, there's not a big, uh, like, trick of I have to follow exactly uh, along, and this is how I follow along. It's more so I'm just doing what sort of feels right at this point. I know I need to get these characters in, in the basic spots that I have them, but outside of that, there isn't much. So, I don't know if that helps. Hopefully it does. Glue down in here, like this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start stick some of these down. I gotta hustle. Clear the time. I don't know if that's on screen. That one there. This one's going to be here. And I will turn these into the multi. Plated weights. Actually, let's just cover it up. I'm just trying to watch edges and make sure I don't have tangents all over the place. So what other questions do we have? Let me help you, help you, help me. So I still have to do the fluff and whatnot on these things and textures and all those odds and ends. But for now, it's about cutting out certain sections so it feels like pieces of this are in front of, not necessarily behind. Next thing was, I'm going to the downside of working with Elmer's glue is sometimes you miss an edge or you move something and all of a sudden it doesn't stick as thoroughly. Um, so there's a question, give me a second, something about editing digitally or something. That's all I saw before I turned my eye away from it for a second. 
Uh, okay, so the question is, um, do you edit digitally when completing the collage stage? Um, I don't, I mean, basically, uh, what I do in, in editing is, like, I don't even know if people will see this, but there's, like, little spots that show up just from uh, either little things that get stuck, like, you know, a cat hair gets stuck in something, or there's a little, you know, texture I don't particularly like. That, like, there's a little thing right here that, like, I think is something that just a drop on this that I'm like, eh, I don't particularly like that, so I'll edit those kind of things out. Um, but I don't really spend a lot of time doing major tweaks to pieces. Every once in a while, there's, like, a... You know, I need to move something over and whatnot, but I try to keep these as pure as possible, to be honest. I try not to get into the sort of finite details of, um, like, shifting things after the fact. Um, partially because I want the original to be sort of as close to finish as possible. But also, um, I, I like the idea that... Um, what I'm working on has sort of, um, so I'm trying to do something here, figure out what I want to do with this. Do I want to go full unibrow? I I do. Um, I forget what I was saying. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I try to, I try to as best as possible stick to having the finish be what you see in front of you now. As best as possible. Well, that's not white. That's not even. I need white. There we go. Let's shake it up. Speak up, okay, I will speak up. I don't know if everybody heard my son just yell at me from upstairs. I'm sure that you did, because he yelled so loud, so rude. Um, anyways. Uh, let's see, let's get in here and let's... I don't know if you can hear my dog upstairs. Hear my dog. Let's see if I can get some colors that will work here. Whoa. That's not what I wanted. I want this. I want this. I want something like this. I have to think, yes. Like that. up in a second again and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see some really cool question I gotta answer. Something really cool. Nope. Nothing. So, like so. Let's 
so. Like so. Try to draw these in as best I can. While still maintaining some sense of the. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you send originals published for reproduction, do your colors ever change for the worst? Uh, uh, ooh, good question. Um, yes, the because I am working in a um, in a traditional manner. Let's put it that way. Um, oftentimes, the colors are not going to be accurate to what's in front of me. They just the the process itself does not allow for a beautiful, perfect match. It's not a one-to-one. -one. Um, that doesn't mean that it it looks awful or anything of the sort, but it definitely there is a a difference in um, the the value and the hue that is presented in the finished product. Um, what I end up with mostly is a lot darker colors just because I'm going from essentially a traditional into a computer so either a CMYK or you know RGB if I'm just looking at screen but then it goes back out to a um, CMYK process and that in turn can you know again it's going to throw off colors here and there so I, I'm, I'm kind of used to the fact that colors are not going to be 100% accurate to what I see in front of me here um, I could send in the originals and have them try to tweak them the best they could to get it as close as possible, but I also think if I do that, uh, I don't want them doing editing without my sort of knowledge. I, I want to make sure that the colors are um, the colors that I want, and I also worry just in general that like, you know, shipping things and that kind of stuff is just not the... Uh, in my opinion, the safest bet for the, um, uh, or uh, it's risky, let's put it that way. I don't want to necessarily have my images come back and they're beat up or, you know, mail or whatever. It's just, it's easy for me to scan them and send them off as digital files myself, if that makes any sense. If there's anybody out there that's a lifter and they go, that's not how these weights look. Well, tough luck. That's how they look to me. Let's see what you think. Based on where the fingers are. Speak up. Speak up. Shy Ronnie. Speak up. Uh, okay, let's see. Are there other questions from folks? Uh, there are questions. Uh, there are questions. Now, maybe what I'll do is 
just to get that color back in there in a couple other spots. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put a big top to something like this. Ha ha! Down here, so I have another little bit of that blue. I did like the more grayish color, but this might have to do, or I can actually, you know what? I can probably go over it with a wash of orangey pink or something like that, just to knock it down. Get a little bit of black, a bit of white. Oh, I'm not speaking up. Okay. Sorry. I'm still talking to a person. Uh, okay, so all I'm saying is, right now, I am going and I'm going to make another big thing of weight that goes down here because the blue is all sort of congested up in this area. And so moving it down, I think, would be beneficial for the piece. Uh, I see there's a couple other questions. Let me get to those. Let's see. Uh, how long do you usually spend on a page spread or spot illustration? You seem to work fairly quickly. Um, I am relatively quick with it. When I work on stuff for books, uh, what I end up doing is I end up, um, generally, uh, sorry, I'm going to pay attention to this cut real quick. Uh, I generally work in a, I'm trying to figure out like how long a spread would generally take me. A spread, probably about six hours. Um, the thing is, I don't work on an individual spread at a time. What I end up doing is I end up working on multiple spreads um, based on what is, um, what is in the spread. So if there is a spread that has, um, let's say, this character, anytime that character shows up throughout the book, I'm going to work on all those spreads at the same time. And the reason I do that is for consistency of color and consistency of texture. Um, and so, especially if I'm painting and not doing collage, uh, it allows me to make sure that uh, the, the, the image is not uh, sort of starting out one color in the book and by the time you get to the back end of the book, it's a totally different color. Or that the textures are more pronounced in one section of the book and not so much in another. It's just a, a safety factor for me in the sense of uh, it, it, it provides a consistency that I wouldn't normally get otherwise. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do, I do work relatively quickly um, comparative to some other folks. Um, not super fast, I don't think, but I, I mean, there's some people that may work even faster than that, but I do know that there are folks that may take like a week per spread. Uh, I definitely am not one of those folks. I like to, I like to get it done relatively quickly. I'm to get this pure black in here. That'll be my bench that's there. of the barbell here, like that, maybe, it may not show up in the final, I don't know how I trim this, something of that sort, I'm gonna wait for this to dry a little bit and I'll do a couple other things, I'm getting told to speak up again. Okay, I still need to do the dog up here and I still gotta do texture. Uh, on all this and then I need to draw I need to figure out like how I'm gonna do the originally he's gonna have a maybe I'll just do a black mouth and then go from there and draw in the teeth I was trying to figure out how I want to do this but I think this is the way to do it I want to make sure you have like a sort of gruff look to him not make gruff the crime dog um, okay, so let's figure out what we're going to do for the dog walking in the back. What color should I use? Should I use something that's wildly different just because I can? Should I try to use something that's warmer in this same sort of palette that's walking in the back there? I feel like 
Maybe it's funnier if it's a different type of dog, and so it's not the same poodle-esque uh, sort of setup. I think I can get... I dare risk that. Do I have any thinner ones? Let's see. Is that one? That one's darker. Do I want to try to do it with colored pencil? Like, what I'm trying to figure out is like... I put a little fluff up in there and then a little fluff like that. This is probably fine. I'll use this. Something of this sort for hair. Uh, I see there's another question. Hold on a second. Uh, so, when you say, it's from Kara, uh, when you say that you work on all the spreads with the spread of the color at once, do you mean you go up, you go from spread to spread, filling in the character? Yes. And so, it's not necessarily that I have all the spreads in front of me, in the sense that, like, I don't, I don't have, I'm not working on, like, 16 spreads at once. But what I do is I go through and I sort of look at what would be batched together. So, the equivalent of, um, if I'm going to have, um, let's say, like, this character and... Uh, he shows up in five of the spreads. Great, I'm going to work on those five spreads together. If he shows up in all 16, what I will do is probably work on a few of them at a time and then come back and then work on a few more. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, like, what else is on those spreads. So, like, if it's this character and then he's in a gym like this in three of the spreads, definitely I'm going to work on those three together at the same time. Uh, and then if he happens to be, um, uh, you know, in a park for two of them, I want to make sure I work on those two at the same time. So there's always this sense of um, of working in batches. Let's put it that way. And so it, it just it makes it easier for me to keep track. Like if I if I had digital and I could just copy and paste a color from one spread to the next, I don't think I would necessarily need to do that. Um, I would probably do something somewhat similar just because of making sure that I'm um, consistent in style that like the character doesn't get bigger in certain situations or things like that um but you know so just it, it, that's uh, uh making sure that it's on model let's put it that way um but i don't think that i would um i don't think i would definitely uh uh like just go from spread one to spread two to spread three in, in that situation. But I think just because I'm working in this sort of setup, this this definitely has a, a rhythm to it that makes more sense this way for me. Hopefully that answers the... the question. These are my muscles. I'm growing my muscles. Uh, where's my eraser, though? So I will do another dog up there. It'll be in a bit. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to... Dark 
working up the undersides of some of those. I will come back in and do this. Whoa, that one just busted. Kara, that's just a, I mean, I've heard of a few people doing that too. Um, I, I do think that that is probably uh, more of a situation for someone who's working traditionally, again, than digitally. And I also think it's probably more so uh, something that happens for folks that are, um, you know, making something that has a lot of texture and things. Um, it just means I don't have to, like, fret as much over the, um, you know, mixing of colors on a regular basis. Or if I know that I have um, a certain, like, texture that... I just have on my mindset, like, I swirl the brush this way, or I swirl it that way, whatever it may be, but I just don't have to bite it all the time. Okay, let's get... there for that one and then I'm just gonna do one back over here like this. throughout but uh i know you're a traditional but uh, i like oh are you a trad wife is that what you're saying I'm a traditional traditional let me give this guy a little Tail. There we go. I want to be jacked. This it feels like it's highlighted a little bit there, maybe even down there, and then come back with some other colors. I had something that was slightly darker than this, but not too dark. It's going to be too purple, I think. It's not horrible, honestly. There's a question. I'll get to the question in just one second. Give me a second. 
trying to draw the last little where'd that color go? Oh, there it is. Um, let's see. Do you use any compositional tricks? So this is constant. Uh, constant underscore NTA. If you go back and watch, I did mention some of them, um, but I will do another real quick recap, or I will I will do another version for you here in one second. Let me see if I can get little teeth. I will, I will get to that one second. Let me just dry this and fix this. Okay, so the question was, do I use any compositional tricks? Um, yes, there, there are a couple of them that I use. I mean, obviously there are certain compositions that everybody kind of knows, like the, the Z composition, the K composition, those kind of odds and ends. Um, but the, there is a, a couple of them that I sort of rely on more than others. That's the color I probably wanted. Okay, so let me draw again for you real quick. So, composition. Uh, this piece does have a little bit of a centered composition. I'm not super keen on it, but... Um, so, rule of thumb. If here's your piece. Most eyes enter here, exit here. That's just standard. They sort of... This is my arrow that goes in, this is my arrow that goes out. And so you can go directly across, but you're not taking advantage of the whole space. So again, a Z composition goes like this and actually makes that path the way that we're talking about. Um, the, other, the other thing that I like to look at is sort of a, I'm a big believer in proportion. And so if I'm gonna put something big in here, I need to make sure that I have devices that sort of direct the eye, um, in, in ways that like or cues that essentially tell us where to look and so like if I'm looking at this piece right now some of the things that I want to make sure that I hit are like angles that sort of bring us down to the corner things that are bringing us in so like I'm trying to lead you because I'm gonna have a character sort of poking their head in here and then leading you down this way and so rather than having um, like legs are leading down this direction most of these are leading that way. There's a few pieces that are sort of leading back against, but I'm, you'll notice there's a, a, or maybe you can't see it, I don't know, it's really subtle, a sort of tiled pattern on the floor. And that tiled pattern is meant to be sort of a directional thing that draws our eye down to the bottom uh, corner. My rule of thumb, this is, this is the one that I would stay with. If you know the rule of thirds, you break an image into a rule of thirds, you have four intersections. One, two, three, four. You want to use one or three of those because if I use all four, the piece is evenly balanced. So if I put a big thing here, big thing here, big thing here, and a big thing here, it's too balanced. If I put two, it's still symmetrical in some way. So it's, by doing three, what I do is I essentially put one of those as being off. Why is that one left there? Why is that missing something, right? So I'm creating a question, essentially. Let's make a little question mark here. Question, by not putting one there. Same thing if I do one, if I have, why is this one important and the other ones aren't, right? And so that like one or three is going to help. Now that doesn't mean you can't do four, you can't do two, etc. but it's a matter of um, three or one, I think, are going to probably benefit you more so. Um, 
another, let's do another quick compositional thing. Consider that you need to do a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. So one of the things that I do in a lot of my work is I do what I call staging. Um, it's like a play. So if I came in here and I said, you know, here's some bushes up front, and then I look back and I see, let's say, here's a, um, what is this? This is a dinosaur. Right here, right? And it's stomping along. It leaves with its feet. He's got some spikes and he's got some whatever it may be. And then I'm going to have a distant background, right? And so it may be here is some hills in the background. That idea of having a foreground, i.e. these two things, a middle ground, and a background uh, can help sort of stage this piece so it feels like it has some depth. So even if I'm working on something that is like um, uh, uh, compositionally, I want to make sure that like I stay, the middle ground is probably somewhere in that sort of like mid-range. Background's probably going to be higher, foreground's probably going to be going off the bottom edge. That also means that I can come in here and I can shade these of some sort. And it's like I'm peering through bushes to what's back there, right? As far as like if there's a gutter, I want to be mindful that like, oh, my dinosaur probably needs, its head needs to be probably over here or something. Ooh, I just drew a weird neck to me. Um, like I need to watch out for certain markers like that or making sure that things aren't tangents. Tangents for anybody that doesn't know. Again, that idea of if I have two of these circles, right? If I put them next to each other, they actually touch. They are the same size here. They're the same size here, but all of a sudden, if I go and I make them the same size, but instead I have one in front, well, we know that there's a potential that this one that's back here could also be huge. It's like the sun and the moon, right? So if I make this the moon, there's the moon and here's the sun. Visually, they might look the same size, but because I put one in front of the other, we're able to make that leap of faith that there's not a size problem. Whereas if I did this one as the moon and this one as the sun and they're touching each other, I don't know if the sun's the same distance as the moon, right? And so it creates this little sort of crosshairs here that becomes a problem. Um, same thing if I have a frame. That's some paint on it. If I have a frame, I don't want things that are touching and creating tangents on the edge because it creates a big crosshair, all right? It creates a thing that I draw your eye to. It's drawing our eye to that point. Because I crossed it over, I'm not seeing that challenge anymore. And so when you start to do your compositions, just watch out that, like, you know, I wouldn't, um, as an example, I'll use this piece up here that's in front of us. Um, I want to make sure that, like, this doesn't touch the edge of that and this one crosses over and that uh let's see where are some other examples of like there's moments in here that i just need to be mindful of where i'm putting um images or elements of it because if i put too many of them in a uh in a spot where they start to connect in odd ways that it's just going to draw our eye to it and i don't necessarily want you to draw your eye to those moments so just be careful of tangents as you're doing those. Uh, Cynthia says, what size paper do you use for your picture books? Uh, depends on the picture book. Uh, primarily, I am working on something where like a, a, a page is about this size. So this right now, I think, is about uh, 12, no, 14 by 14, roughly, somewhere in that range. And so sometimes I'm working up to almost like a 30-inch wide spread. Um, there's times where it's a little bit taller of a book and... I'm limited by the desk space that I have, so I can't work super huge. Um, just otherwise it becomes way too cumbersome, but somewhere in that range. All this tail will be a little bit more silly. Okay, so now, Get in here and let's do some other little touches and then I'm going to come back and I am going to do that dog that needs to be up there in the corner.
your shadows and things of that sort. I do I put a little highlight on it so it feels like there's a uh, kind of shiny and sweaty. But I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, constant, not, not a problem. Uh, again, you can go back and uh, I talk more about it in my domestic, of course, definitely, but uh, you can go back and watch the beginning of this. I think this section in particular, I, I talk a little bit about some of that. And so you might be able to find out a little bit more specifics I suppose that way. Or section, I mean this this part. This um, part of this feed. So I will post this later. I know you can't really watch it right now, but when I post it later you can go back and sort of check it out and see what was being said. in here, I have some other colors that are up here, breaking in the mix, I'm trying to just get some of that yellow to show it down, Vincent Kirsch, uh, I don't see it on my end. Oh, maybe because that's that. Uh, Vincent, I'm drawing poodles again. Don't ask me why. I think I drew poodles when you were on before. But it's a poodle day, apparently. Okay, now I gotta do that dog that's up there. That dog is gonna be a different type of dog. And the question is, what kind of dog should it be? What? Linda Black's on. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Linda. Hello, everybody. Let's get some of Okay, what color should that dog be? That's my that's my big concern. I mean, one of the things I'm thinking is maybe a darker dog because it battles some of the, the stuff here. What do we think, Lauren? What color should that dog be? Yeah. Should it be bluish? Should it be black or, or a darker color just in general? Like just, I'll do this just so we can see value wise. Is it better to have something like that? Should I do a lighter, like should I make this doorway dark and put a lighter value on top? Uh, that's the problem with the dark. I mean, I could try to get that yellow, like a darker version of that yellow, or I could come in and try to do something where it's like, let's see if I do this. If I got something that was like this, so it's got a little break in it, so it feels like it's a hallway or something, it's probably a better bet. And then I could put a lighter dog on top. That's probably a better bet. If I did that. I'll do that. Uh, Cynthia, what paper am I using for the fixing the color? Using for fixing the collages now. Um, the, this is what I use. It's just tracing paper, and I paint on the tracing paper, so I have swatches that are all over the place that I just sort of um, come in here and, and tweak and add and sort of move stuff around as I see as I see fit. Let's put it that way. Um, and so it's just trace with uh, a little bit of Elmer's glue stick and stick it down. And that's it. <coughs> now the tra <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm dying. Uh, the trace that I'm using 
I do paint on it with uh, acrylic gouache or uh, acrylic, um, just so I get a nice, you know, value on it. But I like the the transparency a little bit with the um, acrylic gouache and trace. Like I don't paint it thick. Let's put it that way. Okay, so now the question becomes, what color dog do I put up there? Do I want to do blue? Do I want to do purple? I feel like it needs to be a different color, like a lighter purple or something. So uh, I'm looking through my colors over here to see if there's something that, like, would be interesting. That one's not too bad. I like that. Because then again, it plays off of the blue that's already there. And so it's like a little bit of a change. The other option is something that's like an orange. So I think we have a different orange out here. We have to make some more. What if it's a lighter orange or a pink? It's lighter. What are we thinking, Lauren? I'm trying to find the right color for what I want there. What? Orange, blue, purple. Here, I'm gonna make some little samples so you can see just color-wise what makes sense. So let's say like, here's orange. Maybe that's not dark enough. Let's try this. Let's double it up. I feel like that's not jarring enough. Let's try blue. Should it be something that's wildly different? That one. Like if I came in here and did I know that's that's the challenge. I'm trying to figure out like Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's the color that because I don't want to introduce a bunch of other colors if I don't have to. But like I'm not, I haven't designed it yet. I'm just, right now it was, I, I was thinking about like that he was walking into a gym, but I also think it could be he's a little scared of going in there, but I got to make him skinny enough. So he looks like a wimp by comparison. I need a wimp doll. What? A different type of ears? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's too crazy. No, I don't like that. I was looking through scraps right now to see if there's any other, like, colors that would be interesting to play with. That's too purple. What? That's not bad. that so it's darker but still light enough that we can see stuff on it so wait, let's see let's design out what he's doing if he's coming through I think you would so let's assume it's like this What? Oh, 
Or I think it's just a matter of like making them look a little skinny by like what if I did that fine. Let's use a different marker then. Let's use this. Still have. I'm trying to figure out what the like shape is for the dog here. Sorry, this is gonna be a late night one, Lauren. This is gonna be a little bit longer. <laughs> Let's see. Here's what I'm going to do to make my life easier. I'm going to take kind of a mechanical pencil here or something. And I'm going to draw it out. Yeah. Let's figure out how big. Like this. I'll have to do it really separate. Cut this out and I'll place it in there. And then we'll do separate legs and things of the sort. And you can have Wimpy dog, wimpy dog, here's my wimpy dog. So it'll be like this. Okay. It's a dachshund. Yes. I'm just putting the ears going down makes a difference. Let me see. I gotta get rid of these. Pencil lines on it for my liking. Stick this down, and then I will work on the other parts of said dog. Snoop Doggy. 
No, whoa, 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 whoa. So I'll give this guy a little bit slightly different colored ears and things of the sort. But let's see. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him this. Set up right here. And then I'm going to make a couple little cuts. Make sure things are clean. Boom. There we go. And then we get a little paw. We can stick around the edge. In fact, that's probably best I do this like this. Ooh, that's my tongue tongue. Going rum rum rumble. That's a so small. I have to try to get it to stick down with a tiny little. something that's not sticky. Stick it down this. Yeah. This is the end of the process where my hands get sticky. My hands get hard to work with. get some long legs that are going in there. Let's see. Why does my leg feel like my phone is buzzing, but I don't have my phone in my pants, so. Because it's recording right now, so I don't know what that is. wonder if I should give these dogs shoes, too. It's funnier the longer it is. And the more outstretched it is, too. He's really got a stride going. Oh, come on. Look at this. Beefy guy with no shoes reminds me of Henry Rollins. That's that's what I was thinking too. I was like, this whole piece is a Henry Rollins black flag reference. Just because people didn't get it, you know, that's not my fault. <laughs> section here. So he's, he's going off. Right there. Oh, come on. Come on, glue. Uh, what other questions do we have, folks? I've been paying it to the attention of this and not to questions. There's gotta be some questions that people have. Hey Mark, how'd you get so handsome? Hey Mark, how'd you get so cool? Hey Mark, how'd you get so smart? Hey Mark, how'd you This is where my son comes down and says something rude. Those 
pieces in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a black marker. And do a little, where is that little one? There's a black marker. What's this one? There's glue on this, it takes a second for it to stick in. Where are we at time wise? Good now, good now. Uh, does any damage to paper animation you need nice to cut the excess off the dog's like Not necessarily because what I'm doing is, um, I mean, it, 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 it runs the risk of like causing a problem with, um, uh, like, well, not really. I mean, I'm using an illustration board, so it's thick enough, so all I did was plunge in, and so I didn't really mess with the paper that was there. I mean, it left a little slice, probably, in it, but again, that slice is going to be um, digitally, you won't even see it in the end because it's on that same line, so it shouldn't really be much of an issue uh, long term. I'll give him... Good question. Let's see. That's my dogs upstairs fighting with each other. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him some like ribs so he looks kind of skinny in the end. We're getting close, we're getting close people, we're getting there. Let's see, I need some heavy brows. And then I was going to add, oh, I need a stripe on his pants. So I got yellow, I got blue, I got pink, I think, I think it has to be this one. Because it's funny. And then I need... That could be his little tail. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a little glow on their cheeks. Yeah, speak up. Speak up. Uh, let's see. The uh, Bill Street. So currently, do you derive more joy from cut paper than painting? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, and I think that's primarily because the way that I illustrate with... Um, with cut paper allows for more accidents and more irregularity that I wouldn't normally get if I were doing paint. Paint is fine. Paint can be okay. But I like the irregularity that I get out of the cut paper side of things. And so like... The more that I can do that, the better, and therefore, um, I, I, I lean heavier on that at this point. Doesn't mean that long term I might not shift back at some point, but for now, tis what it is, and what it is, what it ain't, what it ain't, what it holds, what it ain't, what it holds, what it holds. I don't like that. to give him a gym bag is the question. Something that is a, like, I don't know if it's going to make a difference, to be honest. I think that's the reason why the question is, like, if it was going to make a huge difference, I think I'd probably be like, yes, I need to add that, but I just don't know if it's going to make a huge difference in me. Overall, of the piece, he does need probably some hair. So maybe I'll give him a little bouffant or something. Let's grab a... That's not going to be enough. Let's do... You know. no, that's not good either. Maybe I do have to do this. That's going to be fun. A... Uh, little pompadour. So we'll just let that dry a little bit and then kind of... Tone it just a little bit. Gotta come back over it with something. 
in the end. Let's add some other things like some lines for some posters and things on the wall. Just to add some variety. I don't have the exact color that I want for some of this, but. I've seen the initial sketch and then the final. Oh, I'll show you the sketch here in just one second. Uh, those are, yeah, it seems to me the cut paper has most opportunities for happy accents and spot memory. It sure does. Um, let me just get some of this pink in here that I like, which is in the same vein as that. There we go. Maybe I think it's a pink on some of these. Just to add some pink in. Maybe this one's a pink collar. Um, here's the, the sketch, so you can see what it looked like, and this is what we're ending up with, so everybody can see that, uh, and then I need to do, I need to turn these into, oh, I just stuck my hand in wet paint, little collar there. Black there, and then this guy needs a, a collar, and so I will make his collar. Oh, of course, let me tone down his hair. It's a little bit. I don't like the. The greenness of it is what I meant to say. Speak up, speak up. Okay. Okay, fine. I'll speak up. Go. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's get this yellow. Get this to be like that, and then where's my better black? Is this one right? Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw on this, and it looks like it's the shadow. Do that down better, but. Pure black. In fact, maybe I'm angry. Maybe so slightly. There we 
go. Okay. Finish it up with a heavier. So it draws more attention to them back there. And then, actually, you know what? I wonder if I made him have a little white, white hair would be kind of fun, actually. Now that I think about it, let's see if I can get this. He's an old man. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him glasses. So he looks even more like an old man. An old man wear glasses. Nice little thing, then I'll do some colored pencil work and I'll be done. and give him some little wrinkles or something. Huh? Just want him to look like an old dog. Are you working on this painting for a pitch No, no, no. This is... I use Gavin Doodles. I just do what seems like fun and so even though it might appear that it's picture book ready no it's just it's just me goofing so uh this is just a way to keep me active making work that uh because if it's just picture book work that i'm doing that i post on here then all of a sudden i can't post everything because there's a limit on how much i can show and things of the sort and so just give myself a, a challenge to make something is really the thing that I'm doing with this. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one last little thing. I was gonna write like Jim on some of these that were like maybe I'll do it with the paper. stronger lines than what are there right now. Do I ever work on one, more than one book at a time? Generally not. Well, that's not true. Uh, when I do work on books, sometimes they overlap. Um, and so like a deadline overlaps with another book project. The good thing is most of the time it is um, uh I'll say a majority of the time, let's put it that way, a majority of the time it is um, projects that uh, are not in the same stage, i.e. 
Well, you send off sketches for a nut one, you can work on the sketches for the next. And then when those, you know, when those sketches go off, you might have notes back on tweaks that you need to make on the first batch. And so it, it works in that sort of cyclical sort of manner. Um, but for the most part, uh, even if they are timed out relatively close, I work on one uh, just from the beginning until the end um, to make sure that I'm I'm sort of um, what do I say? So I'm 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 aesthetically in the same ballpark at all times. If that makes sense. Screw this up. Let's see. Let's bring this up. I screwed it up again. I'm trying to see if I can get something that looks like a G, but that's even huge compared. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's try this. Anyway, where am I? Have. Should this be backwards so it looks like it's a... Well, no, because it's not necessarily... Hopefully it needs to face out, but... So I do that. Or if I put it over here, how about this? I'll put that one over there. And then I'll have to make a little... Start of an M. It's a gym right there. And then this one over here could have like some sort of smoothie <laughs> image. Yeah, it's a smoothie. Okay, so let's do this. Let's read that up. Let's stick that down. So subtle. I'm going for subtle. I'm not going for legibility. I'm going for subtle. So that's why it doesn't have to be much on these. The little strip that I had for the M. Where'd that go? I can make a new one. It's just, I lost it. Like this one's kind of pointless. Let me, I'll make that into a better M. The pink, I don't think, shows up really. Where did that scrap of white go? go? And I had a nice big scrap of white. And now it's gone. I don't know where it went off to. Let's see if I have any other white in there. 
probably do. I just gotta hunt it down. If not, I can make some. I'll make some real quick. And then that'll be what we wrap with for the day. Because it's already 6.30. Dries faster. <coughs> I'll make a nice big M. Hungry. Anybody want to come over and make me dinner? There we go. Just like that. So let me stick this one down. Uh, let's see. If there's any other questions that people have, because I'm really getting to the point where this is almost done. So if people have any other questions. Now would be the time to ask those questions. So one other little thing I want to touch up, which is I want to get a tiny little bit of this color. And I these. I know it's very subtle and probably people don't see it, but I do. That in there so it looks a little bit like a shadow. There. Give his tail a bit more of a pronounced tail there. And tweaking in the last little things. That heel came up. I think that may be it. Buff dog. That's right. Buff dog was my nickname in high school. I wish. 
I wish. Is there anything else that I need? That may be it. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Finish move for me is I get all the things to get. Oh, is that just what it is? Okay. Get some of the scraps up out of the way. Clean up my markers. That's the next step. Colors go in one spot. The black and white goes in another. There we go. Colored pencil. These stuff. These colored pencils go in a specific spot. This yellow does not. It goes in another spot. They all have specific locations. It makes it easier for me to find them. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. These all go here. And get them down in there without making them all fall out. Now I want to see if I have one other subtle thing, which is, and this is again, not that anybody would care about this, but little things that make a difference to me. I'll go in there. This goes off to the side. This goes off to the side. That goes off to the side. Scraps, 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 scraps. I'll get sucked up. Then I take this black board that I put behind it so it can really showcase the color power of said image. Okay. Now. some of the colors that I used. You can see what was sort of in the palette. Here, we'll do this. I'll make it look pretty. Okay, we'll leave it at that. This is the painting for the night. Y'all have a lovely evening. I will see you next, no, not next week, uh, two weeks from today. Next week, I'm getting my wisdom teeth out, and so I'm not going to be in the mood to gab and doodle. Um, the following week, we have Lala Watkins on, uh, and that will be at an 8 o'clock Eastern time frame. So I'm switching back to, that'll be my first day of teaching uh, back for the semester, and so I'll be tired. And probably, I will warn you, I will probably be in a goofy mood because when I get tired, I get goofy. And so expect me to be a little silly when we have Lala on. Okay? Otherwise, you all have a lovely week, and I will see you again in two weeks. Bye.